Welcome everybody to the summer series PCL. Today we will find out what happens in division B um, of the uh, summer series. We've got four teams and uh, any two of them could qualify today for the summer series championships. Uh, before we get into the chess, um, we're joined by Georg Meyer and of course my co-host international master Levy Rosman. Welcome everybody. Welcome. welcome. How are you um, doing, Levy? I'm I'm good. Uh, you know, sweating it out. Uh, these teams are going to be sweating it out in just a moment. Here we have uh, the first match of the day. It's Baden Baden, right, representing. Uh, and well, we're joined by by their team manager. So we'll we'll, we'll ask him a few questions before the show gets rolling. David, you want to you want to ask the first one? Yeah, my first question is, uh, Georg, why are we seeing you now in week three of this competition in Division B? Um, you're replacing Dmitry Kolars, who played the first two weeks for your team, won two knockouts in two weeks. And uh... First of all, I have full trust in Dmitry. And secondly, I couldn't put myself because I was uh, on a three-week vacation in the U.S., actually. Uh -huh. um, oh. When I have a vacation, I try to play no chess at all. Aha. So you've been without chess for three weeks. Yeah, although I have to admit that when he was playing, I did watch a bit, but I didn't play any chess. Okay, so watching is okay. Yeah, watching <laughs> is okay. Not touching. Just watching. All right. Cool. So you would have been totally confident for Dimitri to win a third knockout today if he played, but now that you're back, you wanted to play. Exactly. I just like to play chess every now and then myself, too. Sure. <laughs> Georg, I, my, I have a question. Uh, in terms of roster moves for next season, I don't know how much you're willing to disclose. I don't know how, how serious and you know, important of a topic it is, but like I noticed that some of the key members of the team, for example, like Alexander Donchenko, he's playing, I think, a tournament. I'm, I'm not sure in which country, but he's doing extremely well. And if you know, Dimitri also continues to, to up his rating, all the players continue to have good OTB chess results, could it potentially mess with the average rating of the team? You have to look into maybe getting like a secret junior on board four that you train just for Pro Chess League. It's actually a real concern of ours because what can you do? Yeah, I'm happy to see every one of them doing well, but we were very efficient with um, maxing out uh, the average rating mm -hmm. in our lineups. So sometimes we, we are like one, two points away from the absolute maximum. And of course, these guys... They win 20 points in some events, and then you have to start thinking anew. Yes. Basically, we have to wait for, for the September ratings if they are the ones used as a basis, and then see which teams, which lineups we can actually form. Interesting. Cool. Is, I, think it's, I think it is interesting to think of it that way, because I like to think of it that way, but sometimes the commentators might overanalyze the situation. <laughs> so, we'll yeah. see. I think their team has done a really good job, Levy, over the years of reinventing each year as they needed to. Um, I think Georg and Ina do a good job scouting. But uh, Yeah, that's kind of a proof. If after one year your people are already too strong to play <laughs> again as the same lineup, then you did yeah. a really good job recruiting yeah. them. Yeah, you have to make a new team each year. Yeah. Um, so we also have a question for you. As a, as a final four team now, does that mean that you guys have to shoot for first place? Like what, what sort of goals do you have once you've already reached a certain level of success? Um, it's, I mean, even when we reach, you know, first or second in our division, there are many matches that are decided um, almost on a coin flip. They're ending eight and a half, seven and a half. So even if you, you were successful in the season, it wasn't easy. So we never expect it to be easy. And we actually always look forward to these challenging matches. That's the main appeal for many strong players to actually take part. That from the comfort of their home, they get some very good sparring sessions. And if you do well, you know, then you get a trip to San Francisco or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's not even about first place. It's just a challenge every time. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, your game's going to get started in five minutes. We've got time for one more question. Levy, you want to take it or? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm actually gonna gonna steal your question here, if that's sure. if that's right with you. If I have your blessing, so you can um, steal anything I have. <laughs> well, okay. Um, so Georg, I have I I have a question. I'm not sure if you've had to answer this before, but it's 
it's kind of like uh, people are obviously very, very satisfied and happy with, with the results of your games, but some, sometimes you're slated as having like a boring playing style, cons overly consistent playing style. So my question is kind of tied to that. Um, does chess continue to be exciting and interesting for you? Now remember, I am also stealing David's question. So if you don't like the question, you can blame David. <laughs> <laughs> so I am curious, uh, in, you know, on, on that front, like, do you take any stake in kind of the, you know, the public going, ah, you know, he's kind of got like a, like a boring playing style. Um, okay, what is bear with me, <laughs> because my answer is not going to be that short. Um, obviously, it's a very interesting question. And I think about myself as well. So usually you, you become a certain player because you like certain things and you're good at certain things. Mm -hmm. But obviously I'm good at playing end games and I enjoy positional chess to kind of have the harmony among my pieces and see the opponent basically without useful moves. So it is like the triumph of, of my play in that case. On the other hand, I, I was very lucky to play a lot of top level events like the super strong round robins we recently had in Germany. And there, I don't want to play like that because I'm afraid then with white, I will make a couple draws that are not interesting because people are going to neutralize me. The type of, type of openings I play wouldn't really allow them to get a fight. And then I start to be much more flexible playing e4 as white, d4, knight f3, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it turns out I play very interesting games then and lose most of them. <laughs> so which brings me back to, I end up doing what, what I do best. Sometimes I would like to be another player, and I think everyone has these ideas. Yeah, you would like to change something about yourself, but it's not easy to be someone else. In the end, you are you are just who you are. <laughs> well, awesome. no, I think yeah, <laughs> I, I I think that answers it. I mean, it's very easy, obviously, as I'm sure you know, as commentators and as fans to go, ah, you know, he just he's boring, whatever. Next, but. Uh, yeah, if yeah. I could play like Michael Tan, probably I would do it. Yeah? I mean, that's the whole point. But if I try, then I, I, it's like everyone is entertained because I fall on my face, kind of trying to do it. Yeah? Well, I think that was yeah. a, I think that was a great and comprehensive answer. So we want to wish you best of luck in in all your matches today. It's getting underway very shortly. We'll let you go. Thank you for joining us. Good was luck. a pleasure. And, uh, Thank you. I think we, uh, David, we have some some quick logistics to cover before we get into the games. Yeah, yeah. So d that's uh, Baden Baden's top player manager Georg Meyer, and uh, he'll be playing for them against the Puffins in two and a half, three minutes. Uh, we haven't uh, even had time because we were so lucky to have Georg here. We haven't had time to tell everybody that they can run in and join the match, but uh, there's still a chance if they're quick with their mice that they could. Um, so real quick, everybody, if you join either the Reykjavik Puffins or the Bot and Bot and Snowballs fan clubs, then you can go into live chess tournaments and click to join them. Yep. Right. We are, before we get underway, everybody, just a reminder, this is group B, Bot and Bot against Reykjavik, Barcelona against Pittsburgh. And we have a very tight race at the top, um, eight, seven, and six points. Right, so Pittsburgh looking to kind of make a break there from from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, why don't we take a look at our picks, David? We we had some overlap, but we had some overlap, and we did not discuss this, of course. But um, both of us uh, seem to have some faith in Georg Meyer, the man we just saw. We both picked him to win the knockout um, that's coming up in an hour. But first, his team goes up against the Puffins. And uh, you picked uh, Baden Baden to win this team match, and I picked the Puffins. Yeah, I I want to give my utmost support to this team just uh, from potentially o being overly critical uh, in a joking way anytime I did commentary over Georg's play. Obviously, as he said, uh, it's 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 a technician's way of playing, right? I mean, he's he's got a style. He sticks to his strengths. In many ways, it's admirable because I think even as as I am, which is you know just just below a GM, we're also still looking for that. Uh, so I want to give them my praise. I think they're a very strong team. I think they're they've got strong fans, and well, I chose them in the top two. Yeah. Well, what I've seen is that the Puffins have won both their club matches so far in Division B, and uh, I expect them to add a third uh, club match win. Uh, continue that streak. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a large number of like 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 rated fans. And um, 
you know, they've won, they've won quite decisively in the past, scored a great number of, of points. So um, I'm expecting them to keep that going. Um, there have been some super close live club matches, um, you know, down like even draws, right? And down right. to one point matches. But uh, the Puffins have not been involved in any of those just yet. There's always been a margin between them and the other teams. And I think we'll probably see that again today. No, no harm in uh, you know, rooting for the underdog. I guess, I guess that was my train of thought. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. Looking at these, at these pairings, it might, it might go for, uh, might go for the puffins this time. Also, everybody, this is the final week of Group B in, in these games. So, ah, oh, well, we've got some prizes at stake, right? I mean, there's, there, yeah. there's, there's some big cash up for grabs. I mean, first place, second place, fifteen and twelve hundred respectively, eight fifty and six hundred. I mean, even, even being a last place team and not potentially making the playoffs in your division still lands you some decent money. And you should remember that this money can be used for free agents next season, right? So, yeah, it's just, just like it works in regular sports, sports situations. Yeah, I mean, in Division B, we've got. We've got three teams, Levy, that are trying to make the qualifiers, right? right. And um, uh, we should be getting – well, I'm going to bother Greg for information about the qualifiers when he's on later today mm -hmm. um, for an interview, the uh, commissioner. Spoilers. But um, we know that we've got the Puffins, uh, the Pawn Grabbers, and the Raptors all um, in the qualifying process this year. So all of them, you know, the money that they pick up could be like a big free agent to help them make it through that qualification process games are underway <laughs> logistics are out of the way and games are underway and we see georg meyer actually starting out with with true to his style knight f3 g3 bishop g2 castles and there it is the catalan so well catalan style of course this is uh if black mm -hmm. plays c6 here it's just symmetrical grunfeld variation style right. uh yeah i mean i've seen a lot of that at the top level lately C4, C6, double yep. Fianchetto, Grunfeld things. Yes, sir. Everybody, also, we... Yes, sorry. Uh, go no, ahead. no, go ahead. <laughs> All right. We're, we're overly polite and, you know, in the, in, in the style of Baden-Baden. All right. Interesting move, Knight C6. Black has come to fight, doesn't want symmetry. Uh, we are, <clears throat> everybody, squad streaming. We try to do this on a, on a weekly basis. I believe this week we are in cahoots with Goldust Tori. She is... Uh, streaming her games today and if you'd like to go check out her channel give her your support we try to do this on a weekly basis for the other chess.com partner streamers yeah she's playing again she's playing for bottom bottom um i suppose that was important to mention yes she is supporting the team that i'm supporting so go support the team that that you support whoever you yes. are <laughs> um you know i think also people have been playing a lot of like knight f3 g3 bishop g2 as white uh, waiting to push the C or D pawns and and sort of wait wait to see maybe try and confuse the opponent about which defense they're going to get to play as black, and then players with black can do the same thing too, right? Knight f6, g6, bishop g7. White's not really preventing that. And I think yep. that's another reason why we're getting this opening so much nowadays, is the popularity of that sort of approach to the opening, that flexible start. Yeah, I mean, again, just like York said, it is it is really a matter of your taste because ultimately. It, Black can play very stubborn chess. If you start out with knight f3, knight f, you know, g3, bishop, g2, they can continue, you know, completely copy you and really get the game into dull territory. But if you like that, if you like the fact that you're playing white, you have the, ex the advantage of the extra tempo when you first start, and you can kind of push even a symmetrical position in a place where you'll get a very slight advantage, then you like those positions and you don't mind. Personally, I hate those positions. Yeah. <laughs> when my opponent yeah. plays knight f3, I try to mix things up and it backfired. I just played a game recently in classical chess. I lost in like 25 moves. Your experiments don't always work. Sometimes they blow up in the lab. So, yeah. uh, David, is there I, a knight b2 in this position? Another thing, um, knight b2, <laughs> well, knight b2, queen b2, knight a4 is your idea or something else? Yes, that is my idea. I'm okay, sure. so white will take on a4 and then... Get these three pieces against the queen, and I would prefer white. How about you? I like a queen, but uh, you, like yeah, queen? I, you, make, you make a point. I wonder if this is going to be if Georg sacrifices a queen for three pieces to start off, and then yeah. I have to, you know, we, we gotta eat our words. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, Georg was already offering like some pawn sacks early on here, but it was all opening theory. So the other thing about being true to yourself, knowing yourself, finding yourself, and then, you know, just, whoa, knight takes b2 played, Levy. 
Yeah, you objectively might though, it might it might have even been the best move because if you don't play it, I'm gonna go B three and just start hunting down your C six pawn. It, oh, Georg must take. I mean, I'm 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 sure he's yeah. He's, he's, unless there's a way to play where you kind of uncoordinate the position, but no, yeah. there, there it is. The queen sack. Ooh. Yeah. This is what exciting. I was going to say about about the whole approach, Levy, is like, if you're true to yourself, if you know yourself, um, then you also get to know your openings really well, right? Because you're playing the same thing every time. You're not like mm -hmm. looking for yourself in the, uh, in the in the 1B3 or in the bird opening or something like that. So, right. um, so Georg had nine minutes and 58 seconds out of 10 minutes, you know, when that knight mm -hmm. takes B2 was played. Yep. So he was offering... Early on, a pawn sack, you know, in these positions here around move 11, black could trade on c3 and win a pawn on d5. Um, but I'm sure Georg knew exactly what compensation he has with the dark squared bishop in that position, and he wasn't just making it up. And now he's trading in his queen for pieces, and I'm sure he also is quite comfortable with this position. Look, I mean, he only spent 10 seconds sacking his queen. That's not, it's not a very deep consideration. Right. Yeah, and I mean, as a strategic player, when you have four minor pieces on the board, it gives you tremendous artillery to fight for key squares, blockade pawns. Oftentimes, computers highly also misevaluate uh, where there you know situations where there's peace imbalance, like queen and pawn for rook and knight, rook and bishop. Uh, I've even had some time. I, I I had a game where I had knight knight bishop pawn for two rooks, you know, something like that on on, on yeah. a totally totally random board. Yeah, I, I would take white here. You just have so many pieces playing versus two rooks and a queen. I mean, black doesn't have a lot of possibilities to target your weaknesses, especially if you control his pawns as well. So, yeah, very nice situation for white. Yeah, we'll see if Gayard can set up his favorite thing in chess, which we now know is a position where his opponent has no useful moves. Yeah, I, I actually think he's already even strategically winning. I mean, if we if okay. we just go back a couple moves... yeah. Uh, you propose something better than the queen sortie for black? Yeah, I, 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 but the thing is, bishop a6 looks so natural. You develop a piece and you attack a rook, and okay, and, and Georg doesn't even play rook fd1 hitting the queen. He plays rook fc1. Yeah. Not even necessarily hunting down c6, but planting the knight on c5. And Basically, from there, yeah. his most awkward piece is that knight on b2, right? So when he's moving the rook, he's thinking about where that piece is headed. Yeah, th this is a this is a really really deep idea. We also shouldn't take anything away from uh, from this matchup in a in a ratings perspective. I mean, Georg Meyer, I think, is the superior player by, if I'm not mistaken, close to 150 points, right? And mm -hmm. he has played in round robins where Magnus Carlsen has played. Uh, definitely, definitely the the choice here. Yeah, uh, he spent less than 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean, he is. Yeah. He is playing this game the way the way we uh, we're accustomed to seeing him play. It's very nice. Honestly, it'd be a horror to be in this position as black right now without having prepared it. Like your opponent's prepared. Like Georg knew this position existed, right? He spent ten seconds sacking that queen, and here you spent half your time. You've got four five minutes on the clock to to maneuver around with your queen and nothing to attack. Um, yeah, very I hate to do this. So Georg's trying to play the move knight d4 now, I think, by deflecting the black queen here with a3. Um, yeah, black tried to stop it by keeping the queen on on d4. And pff, how long did that, Georg think about bishop e5? Yeah, well, the thing is, the position plays itself at this point. And, and next, I think you can just go rook ab1 and knight d4. And how exactly am I going to have to put my bishop on b5? Then you hit me with a4. And the bishop is slowly going to get lost because you'll probably you consider knight d7. Oh, yeah, here you also have knight d7, right? I mean, just. <laughs> the... But you almost don't even want to give away the knight on c5. Right. It's like, my pieces so are so good, I don't need to cash out. Right. It's. It would be an obvious material advantage, though. Once you have rook and two minors, that's, that's yes. a known material advantage. Yes, for sure. So what do you... Well, well now he's thinking. <laughs> Finally, Baden has also drawn their first point of the match. It was 3-0 for Reykjavik. Now it's 3-1. Uh, do you want to go look at maybe boards two and three while we... Sure. Let's have a look at Goldust Tori's game. Since, uh, oh, yeah. Let's do that. We're squatting with her. Um, 
and it looks like things are getting pretty critical as Jay Besky runs the G-Pawn up the board here. I'm going to backtrack like three moves and just check out how this sort of thing starts. So sure. looks like we've got a double King Pawn where Black had to play E takes D4 at some point, but they found room for pretty much all their minor pieces here. So Knight takes E3, Rook takes E3, and then Black just goes super aggressive. Wow. G5. Yeah, with proper defense, this should probably be uh, not so great, but black obviously does have extremely active pieces, and this yeah. is almost this is almost the standard way of a, of a higher rated player playing uh, with the black pieces. <laughs> Just gets so aggro. I think the dark sword bishop in particular is a problem. So if gold dust tori wanted to defend against this g pawn attack, maybe knight a four would be an important defensive move to consider here on move 13 um so rookie two aims to defend that weakness on the dark square on f2 instead of proactively getting rid of the bishop that's pressuring it and now g4 comes down and white's definitely going to see a pretty severe attack i and think after g5 you might have had to play like knight f3 for example knight f3 yeah knight f3 to just kind of get well, rook f3 or even queen f3, right? Because you're hitting f7. Right. Uh, to get a trade, like knight f3. Let's say rook f3. It's not super helpful to leave it on e3. And then maybe bishop e6. Yeah. And, and this is fine. Maybe with a knight on d5. Or... Yeah. The game, the game sort of goes on from here. Mm -hmm. Another idea maybe on g5 is just to go something crazy like knight d5. But of course, I mean, again, as the player that's outrated by 400 points, you're not going to ignore g5 and play knight d5 going for knight f6 or knight c7. Right. So uh, let's see. Once knight f5 happens, black gets to trade the bishop on c8, trade a pawn on h3. And now Goldust Tori launches a final attack with bishop f7. That's a good thing to spot. But it looks like... Black just has the more active pieces. Rook A to G8. Yeah. Yeah, Rook A, G8, and... Okay, King F1 is fine, but at the end of the day, you are down a piece, uh, and mate is probably coming. I mean, I would not be yeah. surprised to see King E1, Knight F3, King D1, Queen F, Queen F1, right? That's probably the way things are going to end. But a really good tip yeah. for, for, some, for some players, really at Golda Story's level, which is 1275, if you're a 12, 1300 player, uh, you're playing someone three, 400 points higher. You actually will experience this oftentimes. They will not play in the style that you admire. I mean, they're going to try to take your head off. <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes when you, when you do this, the great move queen G2, this is the, the bailout option. Yeah. Uh, when they do this, they might not be playing perfectly. They're not Mikhail Tal, right? Like they're, right. <laughs> that's right. They're they might not be Mikhail Tal. They're trying. Yeah. They're so, trying. Stay focused and, and, and don't respect the attack necessarily. So Georg decided to go for knight d7, um, potentially to take that rook. He hasn't taken it yet, but I mean, the knight was good on c5, so it looks like the move of somebody who wants to take it. Isn't he just trapping the queen after knight c5 here? Or am, am <laughs> I just hop crazy? back? Oh, nasty. Good job. Ouch. <clears throat> wow. So there's rook c2, queen a5, and then I guess you just take the fourth piece. <laughs> you just play rook c2, and that's it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's... This, he could also is... take on c6 here, because knight e7's mate. Wow, knight c6 is amazing, and knight takes it. That is... Yeah, he's got to put this in his in his uh, little collection of best his games. Collection of most boring games. Like, look, here I sacked my queen and won in, like, three moves. Oh! No, knight c6. Was Did he miss knight c6? Well, maybe I, maybe there's something wrong with it. No, I think so. he just I think he just might have I think he just missed it. How could the queen cover e7? It she can't, can't, right? It can't. No, it can't. Okay. My experience in hyper bullet knight captures uh, tells me that the queen could not have defended e7. Okay. <laughs> you know all knight, about the tricky knights. Knight b7, David. <laughs> knight knight b7, b7, queen, queen e5. e5. Ah, uh, queen e5. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, queen e5 would actually already be probably losing for white. Make, maybe. make things interesting. Yeah. I think white would still be winning, but yeah, it would be <laughs> unnecessarily interesting. All right, the knight heads back towards c6. Maybe he'll spot it this time. 
Yeah, well, now that he's eaten the bishop, his next target's got to be that c-pawn. If f6, he must have calculated knight takes c6, because otherwise f6 could be awkward. Or oh, I guess knight b3. What a knight. Knight f3 to d4 to f3 to d4 to e2 to d4 to c6 to e7. Oh, you got to love it. All right, he's got to do something about f6 here. Maybe bishop h3 is good? David, honestly, I think every move he has is good. <laughs> <laughs> which is one of the I, I think the position is honestly like plus 10 you like, think Georg's having fun here just play king h1 king just, h1 just play king h1 yeah why not and that is just to make the point just like hey, it's like why are you not resigning why are you not resigning <laughs> i mean it's come on there is knight there, well there isn't quite knight b7 everybody I actually also made this slight error because you would hang your bishop on e5 in the case of knight b7. Uh, you want to be patient in these positions. Honestly, with two minutes on the clock, black might also just self-destruct. White is completely winning, but we also have to just allow black to sit there and wallow in sadness. and mm, Just take a little more and a little more. Exactly. All right. How is, uh, how, how is this matchup between UA Artur and Blizzard? This is board two after all, right? These are... Yeah. This matchup is complex, David. Oh, my gosh. Three minutes of player. Look at... The, the, the players have traded a pawn and a bishop. That is it. When I see this, what I think is, like, this is the kind of game where you run out of time before you run out of pieces, right? Like, uh -huh. the game's still <laughs> going to be going when they get down to bullet. This is tricky from Black. I think he's facilitating queen takes g6 but why can't i take on g6 okay fine knight c3 and next i take on g6 yeah that seems useful huh right i i oh maybe rook h h7 and to g7 and is your queen trapped is that something no, but I guess you can go to g5 and come back, right? You can just take g5 and go go home. Uh, but white is repeating. That's What? What is knight d1? Is he what? afraid of b4? Is he afraid that? Oh, no. Oh, no. What? 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 Oh, that is... That, that is game was a... so interesting. Yeah, how could you? You Don't just do that. Wrong. That is terrible. Ugh. Aspiring That's grandmasters, really... Levy. Aspiring grandmasters. Can you report someone on chess.com for fun killing? Is that is that a report? Like, uh, let's try. <laughs> let's try. I mean, you you can report people for cheating. You can report people for abusive language. But can you yeah. just report people for being boring? Like, is that? Yeah, I've got some red buttons here. Maybe one of them will do it. I mean, just, just, come on, guys. Like, what? You're playing a rapid game online. Take a risk. <laughs> Just come on. What, what's the big deal? Uh, all right, Georg has won the game. Next one is next one is starting up. Uh, I mean, I didn't even see the result. I assume he won it, right? Is it going to show yes. the grudge match score feature in live chess? Shows 1.0 for bot and bot and snowballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, we missed the climactic or un or anticlimactic end of Georg's game to see that other anticlimactic draw. Um, <laughs> but uh, to postpone the climax even further, we'll take a short break and uh, be back in 90 seconds to see where this opening is headed. Yes.
Welcome back, everybody. Levy and I are here checking out the Reykjavik Puffins against the Bottom Bonnet Snowballs live club match. Um, the Puffins really, really need to win this club match, Levy, and uh, they've got a four-point lead already that shows that they mean business. Uh, Bottom Bot is in first place in Division B, two points ahead of them. So, uh, and you and I both consider Georg to be a favorite in the knockout portion. So the the Puffins got to score their their live club win here. Yeah, Georg Meyer representing Baden Baden is is a huge plus, obviously. Uh, but as you mentioned, and really your pick is is looking very very strong at the moment. Reykjavik has had fantastic fan involvement on a weekly basis. It looks like they're going to sweep three and zero actually. Uh, their club matches and with six points and being in third place in their division in group B, this will uh, potentially bump them up. Now they do need to have some success in the knockout battles as well. Every single point counts everywhere. And yeah. well, in the head to head matchup between the Titans, it has not gone their way, but maybe they'll get some luck later in the knockouts. Yeah, not yet, but um, now, now um, Kjartansson has uh white against uh, Georg. So We'll see. We'll see what he can do in sort of a game that is going to represent both their both their preferences. This Queen's Gambit is both players' cup of tea. So we'll see how he can do with the white pieces here, um, gain some confidence for that knockout phase. As you say, the Puffins are probably going to need a point in the knockout phase if they want to make it to the Summer Series Championships. Yep. Um, sure. Winning the club match is great, but obviously, if you get eliminated immediately and you lose the third place match. That's very bad in the knockouts. Uh, but they've sent the strong representative, International Master. Uh, and, you know, he's, uh, he's no joke. 24-70, he's, he's closer to GM than he is to being an IM. And right. <laughs> definitely has a norm or two, un unlike myself, right? I, I would know one or two things about, about uh, a little bit of a slide once you... Yeah, I was, as you started that, I was thinking you were going to say he's closer to being a GM than to being one of us. <laughs> ah. Well, I don't want to put you in the same boat as me. You're you're still you're you're still a true I am. I think I'm 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 falling closer to FM than I am at this point. But uh, any self sabotage is good anyway. <laughs> it's good to be self deprecating. Yeah. So the Puffins grabbed a few more points here. Their lead is now seven, which is getting pretty significant, close to out of hand. Um. But yeah, I mean, if they finish with nine points, I would expect they would finish in third place. So I think they're going to need one point. In my prediction, they need to win one point in the knockout to uh, tie for second place for the summer series. Yeah, I think it'll. It's it's kind of interesting that such significance will fall upon that match. But that first semifinal is going to be uh, Kjartansson against Tuan Minlay. But that's no joke. Uh, he's going yeah. up against wonderful time. That guy is is a machine at Blitz and Bullet, almost yeah. frequently 3,000 rated. And yeah, it's he, he's, he's got to get it done for, for, for Reykjavik. So what do you think of this trade on C3 going into this endgame? Is, uh, I imagine Georg's going to have to move the Rook here, and so White's going to have time to defend the E4 pawn. So basically, we're just looking at a positional trade here, a weak pawn for a Bishop pair. Yeah, I think uh, this bishop takes c3 is actually a fascinating capture. Uh, it, it for a club level player, it looks. I don't know. It, it's almost on, on on both sides. You can argue. You can argue. Well, I'm damaging my opponent's structure, but on the other side, you can say, why would I do that? I'm giving him the two bishops, and I have nothing to fight against the dark squared bishop on d6. But if you just take a brief pause and play a move like rook e8 or rook d8, right after, obviously Georg is going to play that. You look at this position, you go, well, what, what does white have? Black is extremely solid. If anything, white is the one with the weaknesses. C3, A2, E4, potentially. Uh, and black is just going to develop with moves like B6, Knight C6, Bishop B7, maybe. And what is next for white? What does white target with that two bishop you know, pair? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I think it suits Georg's style in a fantastic way. And I would not be surprised if in the next five, 10 moves, uh, he makes the solidity of his position kind of known, realized, and, and starts to seize the upper hand. All right. I really, so I really like what's going on here. So you like what he's doing here. I'm looking at that bishop on d6, and my instinct is like, that guy's got to be good. So hopefully I'll learn something from this. 
yeah, I think I think everything is is quite all right. Um, I guess it's a little bit awkward to defend a pawn on e4. That's part of the problem. Like if Black plays rook to d8, mm -hmm. then probably I can't play bishop d3. Ah, with um, the idea of like rook d6 e5. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it's like unlikely to work out. I can't play knight to d2 because of rook d6. And if I play e5, then I've kind of blocked my bishop in myself. And on knight e8, it looks like he's getting traded. 98 or, or even or, or 94 right to hit c3 or even 94 right because now i'm going Same for thing, that better that yeah so so yes okay rook d8's played by Georg. he thought two minutes on that so that was a big investment from him normally playing super fast in the opening and then when he gets to an important moment boom he's got the time to invest <laughs> um yeah but the thing yeah. is like what does white do now because yeah e5 94 uh, if you play knight g5, what, uh, I cannot play h6? Why not? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, yeah. I don't understand. I mean, I what h6, right? And yeah, then... h6 would be pretty pretty good. But okay, what if you play e5 now? With the idea being hg5, ef6, gf6, uh, well, I don't know, you're just down a pawn. <laughs> right, <laughs> Maybe down a pawn and, and, black, and black is still solid. And that stupid e pawn is basically just died right. all right let's look at the stupid bishop d3 move for a second rook takes d6 e5 no just rook, rook d3 takes d3 of course rook d3 rook and i play d3. knight fd7 probably and knight black, fd7 black is, yeah black has got to be fine there come on yeah no 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 way. <laughs> no way so so in summary it's awkward right it's awkward for white actually to defend e4 that's kind of the crux of the problem if white were already castled here and could play rook f to e1 Maybe they could get the sort of ideal position that I'm thinking of where the white pieces are active and so forth. But uh, E4 is super awkward here. Yeah, but you know, like for example, even if you if you get, get a situation where uh, you play, like you, you play castles for white on move 13 in this position. Mm -hmm. The point is that black, I don't think can take on E4 because bishop takes B8 is actually tactically winning. Ooh, that's right. what I wanted, Levy. That's exactly what I wanted, man. Right. So bishop b8, and now you know you always have the weakness on d8. Even if you play rook d1, rook d1, there is rook d8. So let's say black plays a move like a really passive move, like bishop d7. Okay, rook f e1, and I I will even play any move, like h6. <laughs> I don't know if, if that if that like loses by force somehow. But even see, once you play bishop d7, once you play bishop d7, now I can play a move like bishop e7 or something. And you I'll, know, I can... I'll play rook c8, I'll hit the bishop on c4 maybe. Yeah. I'm always in time somehow. Like, I, I don't know. And even rook e8, even rook e8, it's just a really passive move. Like, what, what are you going to going to, you know, somehow black just is always figuring it out. e5. Okay. E5. I think that's going to get interesting. <laughs> I think. It's going to get interesting. Those positions you're telling me about sound pretty cool. <laughs> cool is good. Cool is good. This I is, see this possibilities for both sides. So I'm rooting for castles here. That's a that's a nice move. But even, yeah. Because, of course, castles does set up this bishop takes b. But black is going to play a bunch of natural moves, and it's really not clear to me what white wants. Uh, this position would be significantly better, not from an advantage perspective, mm -hmm. but just for white having chances if you shift the e-pawn to d4 for example hanging pawn structure but even there with no queens on the board it's really difficult to implement a lot of the game plans you want with hanging pawns which is potentially a kingside attack and if you shift the the c-pawn to d4 it's a grunfeld style position right so uh where, where it's like one on two on the queen side which is well known to be kind of okay for white not a big deal uh he goes for e5 but yeah. <laughs> this mm. is such Georg Meyer style. Like you oh, I really wanted to see castles. Yeah, but he goes for this and now I I really I'm not so sure what he's going to play. What is he going to play here? Knight. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh. What? <huh>. what? <laughs> that was not on my list. Did he just miss knight takes d6? And knight takes c3 at the same time? Does he want knight d6 and like knight f3, for example, or knight e4? Is that the idea? Oof. 
He must. He must. There's no way he missed Knight takes D6. I mean, that's a joke, you know. This guy's this guy's good. So, Knight to must... E4. Yeah, knight c4 and knight f3, or even knight b3. Like, I'm not really, I'm not even sure what I, what I, what I really want. I mean, I. You want the knight on d6. Yeah. Okay. So knight e4 does make sense, right? To try to. Yeah, because that's going to harass b7 and the light squared bishop a little bit. We're so about to see it. It's on the board. Knight d6. Knight d6 played. All right. I got my money on knight to e4. There it is. Knight e4. What has I, this is my... beautiful, right? Knight to d2 and then knight e4 chasing that piece on an undefended square. Knight c6 does make sense. Okay, knight wow. c6 is very, very solid. Very nice. Yeah, just knight c6. <laughs> there we go. Look, he spent no time at all. No time at all. Yeah, Georg but, David, wasn't, wasn't that bothered. I, had a, I have a question for you. Yeah. On knight e4, I saw this idea on knight f3. Mm -hmm. So I think knight f3 fails because of the amazing move b5. So my idea was to find a way to get the knight from d6 away from the pin with tempo mm -hmm. so that it can go to b7 and defend d8. And Brilliant. you can do that with b5, right? Because you hit the bishop on c4. The Let's see if that applied to knight e4. Right. And so now I'm thinking on knight e4. The difference is that on knight e4, b5, knight d6 actually defends c4. But on bc4, you're still down a piece right, right. So, so maybe rook takes d6 would be the move ah rook d6 rook d6 knight d6 nice and you hit c8 and you hit c8 at the end of the variation not that that's like an amazing position for white but uh you know game goes on although i may be losing a pawn quickly to knight right. c6 at the end of it i don't know that might be like an interesting possibility but, but gay or just i mean calm as you can be just quickly plays knight c6 develops his pieces and I have to tell you, Levy, I'm going to admit this. When I play moves like knight to e4, mm -hmm. knight d2, knight e4, um, I'm hoping for them to have some kind of an impact on my opponent psychologically, right? I want to like feel that they overlooked it. I want to feel that they think that I'm a brilliant genius. You know, I, yes. I need that <laughs> feeling. If they're just like, whatever, it's just a move. I'll keep attacking your e5 pawn. That takes all the wind out of the sails of the you know, player who wants to be brilliant. Yeah, I think this is this is really really good point to make for for folks in the chat. Uh, you know, we want to make some really fun and exciting, but honestly, if if you really listen closely at, at certain moments, this is one of them. You uh, you can really learn a lot here. Over the board chess psychology is fascinating. You play a move like knight d two knight d four. You spend 10, 15 minutes coming up with this idea. Your opponent blitzes out knight c six. The thoughts that go through your head are racing. First, you go, wait a second, am I falling into a trap? Like. <laughs> Have they seen all this and they just blitz the, blitzing the guy? Then you go yeah. to the other thought, David, right? You go to, wait a second. No, no, no. They know this is a good position for me. They're just trying to play fast to get me nervous, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that's, another, that's another school of thought. Then there's a yeah. third school of thought. I mean, and, and you just got to... You just got to play the position. You got to also keep playing the position while you're thinking about all that. <laughs> yeah, I, th this happened to me uh, just you know just recently. I mean, it, it's when you play over the board chess against stronger players, this is what they do. We just saw that in the Golda Story game. Uh, the higher rated player just kept pushing the pace relentlessly, like unabashedly. And over the board is, is always fascinating because your opponent might show zero signs of nervousness. And you're like, what? Yeah. I thought I was brilliant. Right. What? You're like, knight takes F7. Nobody saw it coming. And the guy just like calmly sips his water and then plays some other move. Yeah. And, and look at this. Look at this. Uh, Gartensen has a minute left to figure out his position. Yeah. Uh, Georg has played super solidly and is just breaking apart the coordination of white pieces. Yeah. He's worried about the c3 pawn. That's why he's already reinforced it with rook d3. He knew bishop c6 was coming. That doesn't mean that he's figured out how he's going to bail out this diagonal of three hanging things and the c pawn at the same time. Um, I just got to say, these two games demonstrate just how powerful this German grandmaster is. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've... <laughs> We we joke sometimes about the, the playing style, but oh man, is it effective? I mean, this is th these two games are just great. He's winning in fifteen moves in both games. Yeah. What more do you want from a guy? <laughs> right? With like, black, with the queen's gambit declined and an early symmetrical position. Yeah, just just fascinating, fascinating. I'm I'm about to start playing like this. I mean, what what like what? 
Oh, look at that. Leaves the juicy diagonal to, to nail him from this other square here. He's going for C4 square in the D6 pawn. This rook is overworked immediately. Yep. Um, I was thinking that, you know, taking on G2 might be a little bit risky, right? Because white's all, all active and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other thing he might like to do is somehow trade on B3 and put his bishop on D5 to encircle the D6 pawn, but then he allows white C4. So Geyer comes up with bishop to B5. That's just that's just nasty. Yeah, it's a great move. That's and also, nasty. I mean, when White is playing with 15 seconds, it's better not to even trade pieces sometimes. Like in, in a time trouble situation, keep pieces on the board, keep some tension, make mm -hmm. your opponent self-destruct. And we might we might see that here. But well, also, now he should take on B3. So there's no last ditch tricks on E6, no last ditch sacks. Trade on B3, play rook takes C3. And it's basically done. Yeah, I think both are good. I would probably play rook c3 and potentially allow my opponent to, you know, to, to do something like knight e6. Just let them it, play last knight e6. Yeah, go crazy and then all of a sudden realize that I actually have nothing and now I'm down a piece. Okay, time to resign. Yeah. Play h6. Wow. <laughs> good, good, He's yeah. really unconcerned about anything on e6. Yeah, because knight, knight e6, knight b3, I think. Knight e6, knight b3 was... was knight e6, knight b3. That's a nice thing about having three minutes in your pocket when you get here. Um, you can allow a little bit of complication. If you've calculated it all, it's not really complicated for you. Yep, exactly. Exactly. You just just chill, allow the opponent to, to do some crazy stuff. Um, there are some games still going on in the, in the club match. Yeah, Very but the match itself is decided decisively by the Puffins fan club who go 3-0 without breaking a sweat in the live club matches. Um, you know, 10 points ahead with like two games left. Yeah, so some some key <sighs> points worth noting, everybody. There, I'm, I'm not sure uh, we have a graphic for this, but uh, just try to, try, try to keep up. Baden-Baden, after losing the live club match, needs to yeah. place above Reykjavik in the knockout battles yeah. to stay in the playoffs. So... Yeah. They lose the live club match, but as long as they place above them in the in the knockout, they don't get last place, right? Uh, or I suppose they get eliminated in third, but Reykjavik somehow makes the you know makes the the final match. Uh, that would not be good for them. So they need to do that to stay in playoff position. Uh, Pittsburgh needs five points today. They'll be coming on later. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not super confident in them getting five points, but you know, miracles do happen. The St. Louis Blues win the Stanley Cup and stuff like that. Kawhi signs with the uh, Clippers. So things are all possible. Uh, if Goodmunder, that's Reykjavik Puffin's representative today, if he defeats Tuan Minlay in the knockouts, Barcelona's spot in the playoffs is at risk. Yeah. And uh, Pittsburgh and yeah. Barcelona are just cheering for Reykjavik to lose <laughs> at, yeah. at all costs. So Yeah. But so yeah. far it hasn't happened. All right, rook c4 here might be a nice move. Typical just Georg move. Technician, baby, technician. You could chop on f3, but no way. I just chop on f4. Yeah, his bishop is so good right now that he doesn't need to. Rook to b4 now. Nope. Ah, oh, I got one wrong. <laughs> rook to any square. <laughs> Put the rook, rook to any square was the right move. No, no, no. Yeah. I feel like I feel like even though every move wins, if you can predict the one Georg is going to play, it means ah. like your end game techniques getting to a better level, right? If your instinct <laughs> matches his. Okay, I will. I, I never will guess you'd go back to f4. Uh, David, let's go to our resident drawers, which is the board two matchup between UA Artur and Blizzard thirty three eighty eight. This one does actually have the sense that it will it will be a draw because of colored bishops and complete, right. complete fortress. Wait, uh, David, I'm F4. Here. But I F4 think... is playable here, right? Yeah, you can play F4 and play King G4. Whoa, he's got, he's done it. Yeah. Oh, this is actually very bad because you're going to win. Oh, that's great. That is that is. Oh, not all opposite colored bishop endgames are the same, my friends. On King F5. Oh, what does Black have to play? Yeah, Maybe I'm not sure. Bishop C3, what do maybe. Do about this. Bishop D4, Bishop C3, something like that. Wow. Oh, he's down to nine seconds. The Yikes. gods had to punish one of these guys for going back and forth when they didn't need to. Okay, now take the right pawn. Yeah, you have to take H4. If you took F3, then probably it's still a draw. So, I thought uh, you could still come back to G4 and win either one of those pawns. No, but you can't attack them both at once. You're right. Wow. Very instructive. All right. And he wins. Yeah, I'll just show that real quick. That uh, 
on g takes f4, king g4, f3. If he takes on f3, the bishop comes here. And since the king can't attack both pawns at the same time from g5, every time he goes and attacks f6, you go bishop e5. Every time he attacks h4, you go bishop g3. Um, all right. The club match is over 21 to 11. Georg has finished this game off. I just quickly want to go over one technique that he used since we talked about it earlier. Sure. Which is right here around move 23, um, where he moves his bishop back to c6. Right. I mean, it looks like okay to take on b3 or something, but he comes back to c6 and then puts the bishop on d5. Having traded off that bishop on b3, having gotten rid of the c pawn that could go c3, c4, he brings that bishop back to d5, even though there are other things he could be doing, that cuts off the support of this d6 pawn, and then there's, there's nothing really complicated left. Once that d pawn is isolated, it's just going to be easy to clean this up. Yeah. And d pawn gone, and uh, Georg knows that he's won the game. Uh, well, perfectionism at its finest, just two absolutely stellar games, and hopefully... Yeah. We'll get to see it in the knockouts, which are coming up. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're actually going to have all four players from today's teams, the main representatives, the title players, going at it in head-to-head -head knockout battles. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
matches will be at starting at Welcome back, everybody, and uh, get ready for the knockout. We've got one match in the books, and we see Reykjavik briefly leapfrog into first place in the entire division. So they've got they've got the whole division is now in Goodmunder's hands, right? I mean, if he takes this knockout, his team goes to the Summer Series Championships, and uh, there's nothing anyone else can do about it. Yeah, Reykjavik has had an amazing run, and this... This is really important to note for everybody. The whole point of the Summer League was to have fan involvement. And Reykjavik's fans have won them three blood matches. And that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. They have not had that much success in knockouts, but that can change today. And they can not push yet. themselves in the standings. Not yet. So they're in first place right now. It went from 876 to 987. Staying close. But uh, yeah, they're going to need one point, I think in the knockout to get into the uh, summer series championships. Um, so that's pretty important. If they go, Oh, if they go zero points, if they get fourth place in the knockout again, like as they did in the first two weeks, then they'll finish nine, nine. And I would imagine they'll be just behind. Uh, they'll probably end up just behind Barcelona and bottom Baden, and uh, their fate will go to a Twitter vote in August. Right, right, right. Yeah. And well, if the if the fate of, of my universe was decided by a Twitter vote, I don't think I would be particularly excited. Uh, yeah, so I know that would not of, be. Kind of good to just lock it in, huh? Kind of uh, good, and, yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see what happens there. At this point, uh, the playoff implications are very clear. Pittsburgh is yeah. trying to play the role of spoiler, but they do have some slight chances if they really if they have great success today in the knockouts and in the live club matches. They can really stir the pot. Um, I believe they still have one scenario, Levy, where if they win their match and they win the knockout, they can get to nine points. They can leave. Um, they can leave uh, Reykjavik at nine points if Reykjavik gets fourth place in the knockout, mm -hmm. and then they need um, third place to go to bottom bottom and second place to go to Barcelona and all four teams end up in a 9-9 tie and uh, everything goes to the tiebreaker. F total fan growth in their fan clubs. Yep. So everybody, that's the current implication of the, uh, of the knockout system for today. Uh, we've got Gudmundur, Kjart Thompson going up against Tuan Minle and Georg Meyer will take on Carlos Diaz Camayonga for uh, Barcelona. I think Tuan Minle is actually Tuan Minle will be going for Pittsburgh today. That's yeah. uh, that 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 is the matchup. So, well, and next week we begin the other groups. We've got next week Group C. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you excited for that? I I think uh, GM Krikor for Sao Paulo is going to be making a splash. Uh, yeah. For, for for the team in Group C, and that that's a really really intriguing group all in a, you know by itself. Yeah, I finally got to see uh, Krikor uh, streaming the last weekend, and it was fantastic, super fun. I loved it. Um, so his capybaras probably will have a good fan base based on uh, his his streaming activities, and then I don't know what kind of streamers there are on the Eagles, the Wizards, or the Movers, the other three teams in Group C. Um, those three teams are all better known because they're already in the Pro Chess League, so Pro Chess League fans will know them, but I don't know if they have any famous um, or prolific streamers to yeah, uh, get not, the fans pumped. I'm not sure, but Brazilian fans are, are, are you know, <laughs> they, are, they are an amazing fan base in, in any sport. Uh, I'm a big fan of mixed martial arts. They have... Fantastic, fantastic arena now uh, in chess, all the same. Anytime I, you know, I'm going up against uh, Krikor, like in a sub battle or something like that, they are cheering, they're excited for me, for him, whatever. Uh, there are some profanities thrown around every now and then. Okay. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully, hopefully that's, that's, that's kept to a, a minimum. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, slightly different starting time. Very important. Um, yeah. We'll so be playing just... one hour earlier next. We'll be on one hour earlier next week. And for the, for the two weeks after that, the team I'm really excited to see Levy is uh, the Armenian Eagles, a top four team in the, in the pro chess league two years in a row. Um, so I've watched a lot of their, uh, a lot of their matches. I'm, Obviously, you have too, since they made it to the end every time. Yep. Um, big fan of them. And uh, they also have a number four bullet player on chess.com on their team right now, Shant Sargsyan, uh, big oh, wow. superstar this year in the uh, Pro Chess League. Shant is extremely good. He's gotten a lot of praise from Hikaru. Whenever I see Hikaru streaming, he's always like, oh, I got to play Shant. You know, it's one of those uh, one of those things. Like a tough opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's like, oh man. So, so she, yeah, Shant is quite good. He, I believe, yes, he was at the Pro Chess League finals for them this year. So he's got a lot of experience in that kind of format. Yeah. He's another one of those players, like Baden Baden, has also suffered this this small problem where a lot of the players on their team are also playing classical chess and are getting better. And so that yeah. might potentially mess with your average rating. Group C is very intriguing. And just yeah. from a mileage perspective, like if you had to fly, uh, what uh what division has the biggest amount of miles <laughs> like i think between... i think you're right with c i think that's the one where it would be tough getting between sao paulo and and armenia <laughs> yeah i mean that's 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 a brutal one yeah so yeah and then mumbai is you know another subcontinent away as well and yeah that's that's a big that's a big division Group C is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be like, you know, we're trying to put people geographically in some sort. Or I, I feel like Group C is always the division that's like, okay, these are four remaining teams and they're sort of sort of just left over. So yeah. all right, let's put them into it. Yeah, 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 get out of here. So um, my my dark horse yeah. candidate in Group C is going to be Sao Paulo. I'm really Sao excited. Paulo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've seen what the fan club, what kind of impact the fan club can have right i mean Reykjavik in first place right now in division b um fate on the line in a couple minutes here but um they have been carried by that by that fan club they don't need a 2600 gm so far to be in the mix though it could help yeah can't, can't hurt can't hurt to have such a strong player uh yeah it, it's it's a kind of a weird uh, situation our our numbers team in the background is sort of you know crunching the probabilities and any chess yeah. player that was following the candidates tournament not the world championship but the candidates tournament last year uh, i believe it was last year right uh what before the last round there was this huge mathematical chart of like if this person wins but this person draws but that person loses but that person <laughs> draws like and all the probabilities yeah. right and i think they were all kind of putting what could happen where, but that was all put to rest because Fabiano won that last game with black. And, and, and I mean, I think that if that happened, then he clinched. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. I always find those, those possibilities a little bit confusing. Um, and I just sort of think like, well, we'll wait to see what happens or, well, let's win our game. And then we know <laughs> that we've made it. I always find it funny in a, in a, in, in a, in a situation like, in, in sports where you have eight teams competing for a division, uh, sometimes certain talking heads in sports will say, well, the second seed team would actually rather go head to head against the sixth seed, you know, and three usually play six. So they might actually be happy losing a game or cheering for someone to win so that they become the third seed. So they play the sixth seed. I'm like, do teams actually think about stuff <laughs> spend like their this? time thinking about that instead of yeah. just trying to, there's enough to figure out to like be good at the game you're playing, right? Right. I I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't quite know. I'll, I'll I'll tell you like when I look at the standings of tournaments, sometimes I'm playing in. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes I'm like I'd rather play that person than that person, but. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, look, you got, you got to play who they put in front of you. You just got to play right. your best. Um, yeah, you have to be used to that as a tournament player. Just you wait to see who gets served up. So, uh, David, is Magnus yeah. going to break 2,900 before we get uh, these? Players? Yeah. Magnus is going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's He's great, man. He beat Dingley Ren with black. He beat Yana Pomnachi with black. 
that'll do it. That'll do it. Wow. Uh, also, today, also mm-hmm. right now he's drawing Wesley. So, so I don't. Well, that'll, Wesley that'll so cost him seven tenths of a point, but whatever. Yeah, Wesley so played a relatively uninspiring uh, kind of opening. I think yeah. Wesley was very very happy to draw, and not lose. Blah blah. So. Yeah, smart call. I mean, Ding kind of like slightly had in mind like maybe I could beat Magnus, and that uh, didn't work out. Well, Ding is not dissuaded. He's oh well, he's actually he's not playing a Catalan today. What I found interesting is that Magnus played this early B five in the Catalan, uh, which Hikaru has actually played very you know recently, and mm-hmm. Magnus played it totally differently, and yeah, actually played in a in a way that had not been played at all. If you look at that, it's. There's no games ever, and he's done some deep preparation. He said in his interview that it was match preparation, that unused you know preparation from his match. Yeah. And I actually didn't think he was referring to the World Championship match. I thought he was referring to the match against Ding Liren in St. Louis. You know, he had that very long match. Yeah. Uh, and I thought maybe it was from there, because they played a lot of Catalans. No. Yeah. He actually prepared it specifically for the Fabiano, huh. uh, <laughs> for the Fabiano match. I guess yeah. he was anticipating potentially a Catalan from Fabi because Fabi yeah. had a couple of them. So that's that's interesting. Just I mean, anything is possible. I mean, Fabi's Fabi's uh, capable of playing anything. I would say so. If you went into a World Championship match and you were not, if you didn't have something prepared for the Catalan, I think it doesn't matter who you're playing. It would be a mistake to go into a World Championship match and not have looked at the Catalan. Um, yeah, you know, we've seen players like like Kramnik or Anon come into a world championship match and just switch their first move. Um, so you just got to be ready for everything now. Yeah. It's... Do you think uh, Do you think Maggie can get twenty nine hundred? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, the the okay. only thing against him is the mathematics. <laughs> I mean, he has to. He's gonna make a lot of draws because yeah. that's top level chess. But yeah, they they add up, and so he's got to win more than he you know more than he draws. He hasn't lost the game in 77 games. He's got his own massive streak going. Uh, and he he doesn't yeah. look stoppable. I mean, he, he, he looks like a machine with black. Yeah. With white, he has no problems. He's not running into any deep preparation. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what, what has inspired this this enormous pump. Maybe, and a lot of people you know th- think this, that he just prepared so much for Fabiano that he has so many weapons at his disposal uh, deep analysis of so many positions and mm-hmm. uh yeah I, I, maybe he changed his diet <laughs> who knows like fish, I, yeah. fish oils i don't omega threes uh, who knows right like, i would i would guess motivation i would guess motivation i think he'd like reached a point where he was like number one and there wasn't like any like obvious next goal or challenge or whatever and it got like a tiny bit stale and then i think some you know some bad results may have re-inspired him to uh really put his stamp on the chess world again yeah it's it's lonely at the top i remember there was some article about magnus like that and that was basically the point is that there's no one who can who can challenge him even fabiano has not beaten him in a classical game in i mean i don't know i i I don't have the number on me and i i don't even know it off the top of my head so (laughs) And here yeah. he goes against Ding, completely, you know, just stellar game with Black. Yeah, just just fantastic stuff. Um, we've been given the countdown for the knockout battles, so yep. Thanks for thanks battles for being patient. coming up. Um, let's go through our predictions for these knockout battles again, real quick. Um, we both have Georg Meyer as the favorite in the first round. He'll be playing as the number two seed against Kamayonga for the Raptors, and the seeding is based on the fan growth this week. And uh, this week, Pittsburgh had the top fan growth. So Tuan Min Le comes in with the top seed. And in terms of the format, that means he gets white in all the 15-minute games. It means he, if he draws a game, he gets draw odds and bullet. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's a pretty impressive bullet player. So give him draw odds. That's going to be a bit scary. Yeah. And uh, here he is. Uh Oh, do I have that wrong? Is Pittsburgh not the first seed? Are they the fourth seed? Maybe I got it backwards. I got it backwards. Pittsburgh's well, the fourth seed, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is the fourth seed, but uh, 
I mean, that, that, that might all change, right, as we, as we get into, into some of these games. Well, it's based, on the fan, it's based on the fan growth this week. And now I'm remembering that uh, the Puffins are actually the first seed in fan growth this week, even though they were the fourth seed in fan growth last week. So their mm -hmm. fan club did much better this week. Um, that might be super important for them um, to have that white and draw odds uh, as they try and score one point in this knockout. That's what they need. Games are underway, but I also just want to say before before we really kind of deep dive into those games, it's so hard to go against Georg Meyer in this kind of format. I mean, he's got so much experience. He played 58 games this year for for 58, David. That's a lot. I, I mean, Kalars played 61, but 58 is nuts. And with a performance yeah. rating of 2680, the guy's yeah. playing super GM over 58 games. Come on. Yeah. Cheering against, you know, not, not cheering against them, but going against them in any sort of format is is blasphemy and you basically only do it if if you've got some you know some some really sinister uh betting odds somewhere <laughs> yeah well he yeah i mean we're we're both in agreement he's the he's the guy to fear in this format but i think the other guy to fear is tuan min Lei. i mean if he gets into those bullet into those bullet games he's a real he's a real force in bullet he had a Good performance in uh, Pro Chess League as well throughout the season for the Pawn Grabbers. So, Well, which game do you want to look at? I, I'm actually very, very much intrigued by this Reykjavik-Pittsburgh matchup. First of all, what on earth is this opening? I know it. Uh, and I've actually played this as a kid. I, I used to play these positions, these, these early Knight H4, Queen B3 in, in, in positions. So uh, there is... If I'm not mistaken, a very funny variation, David, after queen b3. Uh, okay. Instead of queen c7, black can play b5. And the point is that after b5, cb5, black plays c5. This seems like the move that white has most prevented out of all moves. Right, and you play it anyway, and then you play c5. And essentially, okay. you blow open the center, uh, and you attack the king. And and, and all right. white has is a pawn. I, I, I have played some, some of these... Uh, some of these positions, they're very interesting, very exciting. Right. Chappelle played it recently, so I don't know if you... Oh, because this F3 move weakened the king side a little bit. And so you play B5 to distract the C pawn from pressuring D5. The reason you couldn't play C5 here would be partly this pressure on D5. Yep. Um, but uh, in this so game, we're just five. seeing... All right, I'm going to play that move in my next Blitz game. Do it. You play the Slav? No, but I will. I used to really like to see the slow slav. You know, this is what this is called with with the e3 and, and knight h4. It's called the slow slav, <laughs> as opposed to the hyper slav. Yeah, as opposed to yeah, I, I I think this is how I was taught it, or at least I learned it. Um, mm -hmm. It is called slow slav, uh, the quiet slav maybe. And yeah, I mean it's very very solid, not too exciting. Okay. Well, the other game's a little bit more open. Maybe we'll turn to that for a moment and then come sure. back. Um, here's our first appearance of Kamayonga for the Barcelona Raptors. Um, the only player playing today in the knockout who's played previously in the summer series and who's played a knockout before is uh, Gudmunder for the Puffins. All three mm -hmm. other players are, are first-timers in the summer series. So the Raptors, they've played Daniel Force in the first two weeks, and he finished second each time. Very good results. Really helped them to a, a respectable position in this in this group but uh today they're replacing him with i am kamayonga mm -hmm. um who is an overperforming i am during the main season of the pro chess league and let's see he's got black against georg Ge georg's traded his catalan bishop for some structural damage here on c6 yeah that was very odd uh I was I was quite confused. And uh, we see here this move E5, I think a good thematic idea from Kamayonga. He wants to open up the position as much as possible because his pawn structure on the queen side is ultimately wrecked, right? I mean, you don't want to play an endgame with this pawn structure against Georg. No, so, absolutely not. So he's saying, let's try and blow something open and show that Georg's king doesn't have anywhere perfect to go to. Sh should also mention on the other side, uh, this is a must-win game for Pittsburgh. So we'll see what happens there. As far as this yeah. game is concerned, Georg, yeah, this is quite quite standard in in the in these early DC4 Catalans to play knight e5 before you castle. 
Uh, and I was expecting after queen a4 the move c5 from black because c5 just seems like it's it's mm -hmm. the way you solve your problems. I mean, right. you don't ever risk having a bad structure. Try and get rid of that c pawn by a trade. Yes. Um, I suppose it does involve a potential pawn sack if white played queen c4 in response. But um, yeah, that would be okay for black to just to give a pawn, I think is... I think it's the theoretical move. I might be mistaken, but I, but I think it just makes sense. The way you have it now is that white has zero structural problems. He rebuilds mm -hmm. the, the light squares with F3, maybe E4 in the future. You know, you mentioned this kind of thing. And yeah, black structure is just damaged. That's it. So Yeah. Um, some people may have wondered why the black queen wouldn't go to the B6 diagonal to keep white from castling. And basically, they'd like to. But on queen D4, there's rook D1 chasing her away. And on queen c5, there's an even worse move, queen b5. And uh, that hits the bishop on b7 and trades queens, which I think we all know is not what we want to do here if we're playing this structure against Georg. Or maybe any structure against Georg. So. <laughs> or any structure against any player. <laughs> if you're as bad at the end game as me, yes. You don't want to trade queens in any position ever. I'm having some deja vu. Look at the game between Pittsburgh and Reykjavik. The structure is almost the same. <laughs> How did that How did happen? That happen? Yeah, like what? <laughs> oh my gosh, wait. Uh, if, this C, if this C6 pawn or B7 pawn were like on C4 or something. Oh my gosh, wait, David. Yeah. In this game between Reykjavik and Pittsburgh, if you play Bishop E3, can, can Black play Queen takes E3? They must have some kind of plan because... Uh... Otherwise, that would be. Oh my gosh! Wait, is the the king is coming to a four? Are you really telling me you're not mated? I guess you're not. Wow. Chess, huh? Yeah, don't don't blunder that. Pittsburgh bishop e three. Don't do not go queen e three. If you want to stay alive, you want to keep your season alive. Don't do it. But the king isn't out of the woods yet. Are you sure that this is clear? I think. I think this may be complicated. I think it may actually be complicated. Well, I'm just going to go like G4, King, G3. G4, King, G3, right. You have like G5? <laughs> but I, I mean, G5 yeah. takes, and, and the thing is now my pawns can always block your checks. So Bishop B3, F4, something like that. Hmm. And, oh. No, there, there is not even a draw because the king will always run to h3 if you play knight h5. Well, yeah. fascinating stuff, but I mean, too Jeez. exciting. Too exciting. Bishop e3 was finally played. Um, but uh, it seems like the Puffins player, Gudmunder, was uh, alert enough that he double-checked that before he went for it, huh? Yeah, he definitely did not want to end up on a highlight reel. You know, he castled castled queenside. That reminds me of what Firuz just said about Mohamed Yarov's game the other day, where in a normal position with White having an IQP, he castled queenside and lost in like four moves. And he's like, is this a joke? A typo? Castles queenside? Okay, so here's the position where Gare castled queenside. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an open B file. Your goal is to win the C pawn. Now your king's over there. Maybe he just un understands the position. Uh, I think actually castling kingside or queenside was an option. Maybe he Either thought way. of us. Maybe he thought of us. He was like, if I castle kingside, they'll troll me. But if I castle queenside, then I'll gain some respect in the chess world. Um, I thought he'd he'd uh, he'd sort of made his peace with being who he was. You know what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. I can't, maybe. Yeah. I, I I I'm not sure. Maybe he thinks he has long term attacking potential on the on the king side. But the way it looks now, if you ever get the move e4. Queen a5 is nice. It's a good start. So it hits the bishop, and obviously you cannot play c6. You would love it if you could, but you can't because e4 traps your bishop. Uh, if you put the rook on d8, then bishop c7 comes, and your rook is hit. And if you play bishop like b7, well, I mean, that looks fine. I'll play e4, and I guess white is just always slightly better. Yeah. All right, here's my thought, Levy. The Queenside Castle lets your king be an extra defender of the B2 pawn. Wow. And that could be part of the point of it. 
because that pawn can be annoying to defend otherwise. That's that's deep. That's too deep for me. All right, then we'll just say it's wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's it's probably right. I just don't, you know. Um, yeah, the king is safe. I, I I'm not sure how many people watching would would have castled queenside. I I didn't see anything really too wrong with castling the other way. But yeah, the pawn on c4 could make the queenside pawns a bit weak, right? Because you can't really push them since right. the pawn is in the way. Um, do we want to take on c7? I mean, do 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 we want that pawn? Like if if white plays you know, e4. I mean, the thing is, the move c3 is hanging over us, right? With the idea that if the if b takes c3, in some cases, you have queen a2, mm -hmm. depending where this queen is, right? And you on c3, if you take with your queen, there's queen takes a2. So I mean, we've got to be very careful about the move c3. And queen c7 seems to be asking for c3. Yeah, and not to mention there are some positions where queen e2 is possible. Of course, the bishop on c6 is hanging. But yeah, I mean, c3, bishop a4, queen, queen takes a2, queen takes e2. It's tricky. We'll see what Georg can come up with here. So maybe rook to d2. Maybe okay. rook to d2 would be consistent with the approach here. Like e4 seems good blocking the light squares, but rook d2 has that sort of end game idea of defending all your pawns in the same on the same rank, right? right. And Georg knows all those end game ideas. <laughs> So he plays for KG1, which stops C3. So if C3, you can actually play Queen C3 and okay. not worry about A2 hanging because C6 is hanging. So you can't play C3. Rook H1, not committing the pawn to E4. Very interesting. But if he's not committing the pawn to E4, why didn't he go Rook D2? This is all very intricate. Maybe Rook D2, C3 was a problem. Rook d2. Whoops. Yeah. Let's see it. Rook d2. C3. Queen takes c3. Queen takes a2. Queen yeah, c6. I, queen a1. Yeah, queen a1. And I guess he didn't like the fact that he would have to play b c3 because maybe his king is too weak. But I don't see how you can get it back in a clear cut fashion. Right. Uh, I just kind of feel like, well, may, maybe he just didn't like it. He thought he had something better. Mm hmm. Okay, Rook H E one. We already interviewed him once, so I don't think we're going to be asking him to explain <laughs> this one to us as well. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's that's what we're going to be doing. Although it's quite an interesting one. Um. All right, Slav perspective. How are things going for the Pittsburgh pawn grabbers here? How are mm -hmm. how's uh, how's how's this Slav position for Black? Let's take a look. Very complex game, this one. Tuan Minlay up on the on up on time. I think in these positions with two bishops and an open board, white is always a bit better. But like you need to really figure out the right way to play. And it's not always clear at all. I mean, are you trying to play h4, g4, h5? Maybe <laughs> not, because your king is there, right? Like I, I don't know. What do you what right. do you do? Like, what where where is the where is the play? Yeah, I don't even know if rook d1 is going to run into like c5 trying to establish the d4 square or bishop takes c3 doing some awkward trades. Um, I really don't know what to expect at all. I feel like for the moment, the black knights are pretty well kept at bay. So, so maybe white's better somehow, but I don't know what the white plan is. If I don't have a plan, then can I really be better? Hmm. It's almost like an unstoppable force and immovable object question. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I probably would also be down on time here with white. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, I mean, it's one thing to just to sit here and go, well, I got all my pieces on good squares, but, well, there's no harm in playing a move like rook hd1, right? Or rook cd1, or, I don't know, bishop d2. Bishop d2 to kind of poke at the queen on a5 with some discovered attacks. Although... Bishop D2 doesn't actually create any threats because you can only go knight B1, and I don't think knight B1 is a particularly scary threat. So no, if bishop if if you're retreating one piece in order to threaten moving your knight to the first rank, that's that's deep. 
Yeah, that's 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 either alpha zero or you're a moron, and in this case, it's probably the latter. Yeah. Yeah. Not not super threatening. Yeah. Um, I guess on rook d1, bishop takes c3. Play. Rook takes c3. Rook d1. I'm worried about my a2 pawn, so I'm playing all these awkward moves from white. Um, recapturing on d1 with my bishop at the end. Yeah. Trying I, to guess it's, I guess it's fine for white to do all that. By the way, Georg's opponent after rook h1 hasn't moved, which does not I indicate to me that he's coming up with some sort of deep, intricate ideas. I think he actually just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> right. Which is... I mean, he definitely still has moves. It's not Georg's dream scenario where black can't improve their position anymore. But I guess they're confused between, you know, rook b8, allowing bishop takes c7 with tempo... Are they going to play c3? Are they going to play rook d8 and try and trade rooks on the d file? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's just pure confusion, which is fair. That's what I'd be feeling in both of these positions. Yeah. Just pure confusion. Well, you would prefer probably to have white. Uh, it's, it, it's better to have the structure. And alpha zero has shown in at least the 10 games that were released to the public the, the power of the opposite colored bishops the power of neutralizing uh, the opponent's the opponent's piece and moves like e4 rook e1 really do that for white negating the scope of the light squared bishop rook a c8 looks like a dreadful move it, 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 I, if you have to play move like rook a c8 mm -hmm. it, it, it really really looks like like white can slowly but surely improve the position even a move like queen e5, which would trade the queens, which obviously is a very, very big decision and in theory can push the game closer to equality, mm -hmm. it, it just will show the dominance of the dark squared bishop, just how strong it is. And um, yeah, we've seen alpha zero use these kind yeah. of opposite colored bishop positions to attack the enemy king. So, so on queen e5, there's the move c3 again, uh, because then if you take on c3, there's queen a2. If you take the queen, there's CB2 check, followed by F takes E6. Wait, but queen C3, queen A2, isn't the bishop on C6 hanging? Oh, is it still? Hmm, queen C3. No, but you don't have to play queen E5. I mean, queen E5 like, is yeah. just, just to kind of draw the point. Yeah. So I was thinking of bishop D2 to C3 for white here um, because I keep being annoyed by the move C3 from black. But maybe you could play queen E5. You could probably also play bishop e5 into c3, right? Bishop e5 Just, to get to c3. The same idea. Just okay. It's yeah. like rook f8, bishop c3. Yeah, I think landing the bishop on c3 is a big plus. I think it's it's very very nice. And I mean, white is white is it's one of these positions where white is better forever, like forever and ever. White will have an advantage. Well, forever, is... ever, ever. Yeah, forever, ever, ever. Yeah. Mm. Trust me. Now, will he win? Different story. Yes, but we would bet. Yes, he would. Oh yeah, if you if you made me bet, absolutely on on Georg. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to. Well, maybe everyone will be castling queenside in the Catalan after this one. Yeah, Georg makes me want to play the Catalan, and I never thought I would actually say that. The Catalan is just such a vast, complex opening. Yeah, similar to the night or if the you know the the real opus. It's band. a lot to pick up. Uh, so, but it is it is a brilliant and fascinating opening. So, yeah, I find when I watch like somebody good play a particular opening, or even not just an opening, but like a style of a game, I'm like, oh, I want to go out and and try that mm -hmm. thing that I just saw. Um, if it's like a particular end game, then it can be hard to orchestrate, but. Uh, there we go. Queen e5, your move, Lev. Oh, wow. So, so Georg actually goes for this trade. Amazing. So he's so yeah. confident in his endgame skills. I don't know how many players would have actually traded the queens there. Boom. You, you might have just, you might just overgeneralize it. Oh, opposite colored bishops, rooks. But he is so confident in the weaknesses that black has and his ability to exploit them with active peace play. He goes queen yeah. e5 after, after a deep think. So, uh, Speaking of queen e5, we have another queen e5 on the other board, and it looks as though wow. it looks as though Pittsburgh is, is looking good. Re, uh, Reykjavik's representative, uh, Gudmundur, was 
unable to seize the initiative. The computers liked his position, but that 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 doesn't mean much. Okay. You know, if, if computers spitting out plus point seven right around here on move twenty one, yeah, but if the tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, did it make a sound? All right, you might believe it did, but if the computer says you're plus 0.7 and you have no idea why, you were never plus 0.7 in the first place. You were place. never plus. <laughs> See, that's my problem too. Like looking at both of these games, Levy, I could tell you probably accurately that White had the advantage out of both openings, right? But if you ask me what's the plan for White in either game, what's the plan for Black in either game, that's where I was totally confused. It's like I kind of know who's better, like, you know. If a GM were playing the game, I could just watch what they did. Then I would say like, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I see why that's good. But coming up with it, something else. Whoop, we got a bloody move here from Tuan Min Le. Wow, that is, that is an incredible move and a very good one given the time situation. White really needs to keep his composure. I predict White gets a losing position in the next three to five moves. Okay. That's my, that's my bold choice. With three minutes and really the tide of the game shifting so dramatically in the wrong direction. Uh, for example, the, the engine here is suggesting knight takes d5, c takes d5, and g4 for white is the only way to play. That is not what? going to happen. That, that is, is not going that, to be played. That is never going to be played in every other variation given <laughs> it's currently very bad for white. So It's yeah. like you looked at the engine just to know what could never, ever possibly happen. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if knight d5, c d5, g4 happens, then I'm going to donate five subs to the channel, which is going to be great to some people. But uh, And that's only three ply. It's like three ply of like good moves, supposedly, but just impossible. There's no way those would be played. Yeah. Um, I, there, there we go. For anyone wondering, the first, the and there you go. You're, you're, you're free and clear on the first move. The basis um, why e takes d5 doesn't win the knight is because bishop takes c3, removing the defender of the bishop on e2. So that's what we're going to see or have already seen. Yeah, he's already played it. Yeah, so bishop c3 removes the defender of e2. Yeah. And pretty amazingly, you actually must move the bishop. You cannot take... Yeah, so he goes to c4. Yeah. Now, here, bishop e1 is a playable move, but then rook e1 comes. So if he played something like bishop takes uh, c3 here, then there would have been queen e2 check, king to the back rank, and does the queen just start gobbling on the third rank, or does white play, or does black play rook e3? Seems vicious too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just just a great job. White spent I, a lot of time. Either one would just white would just fall apart once the queen gets behind these pawns. We didn't get a chance to talk about how great it was, but move twenty two g five levy that that's the move which to me sort of like started black seizing the initiative and and uh taking control of this game maybe we'll have a chance to talk about about uh about everything in detail later but there's sort of action going on all over now um queens were traded as georg wanted queens traded on e6 e4 pawn trying to block out that light scored bishop rook to d4 make him guard yeah it's basically a position <laughs> my 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 good friend's international master alex ostrovsky is a coach of a lot of talented young players here and uh the end game is obviously a place where a lot of these players struggle mm -hmm. so because yeah, they're really trying to force the issue find tactics where they don't exist and then you know mess up winning positions a lot so he has a he has a philosophy that he teaches these students which is which is called uh, stewing you just stew them you know that's that's what you do you very slowly throw some seasoning in there Kind of stir the pot a little bit, slowly improve your position, make them get low on time, make the opponent do the the the, the heavy lifting. The heavy lifting for you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that that's how Georg is going to play this position. He's not going to take any risk whatsoever with his next few moves. And once the Barcelona Raptors account, and that is um, the rep, you know the representative. Kamayonga. Yes, Kamayonga. Um, you know, if he gets to like ninety seconds on the clock that's when disaster is going to strike. That's when you start feeling the pressure. You're not going to find all the best moves. And yeah. Yeah. All right. So back to the game that's going to be a bit bloodier first, I think, as we, this one will probably stew a bit. Um, all right. We see Georg transferring the bishop to some other pastures. Um, let's, see, let's see what's going on here. Bishop mm -hmm. takes c3. Bishop c4. <laughs> Getting out of the way of the problem on e2 and looking at f7, and uh, black had a bit of a think here, and then took yeah. on e1, and white just takes back. So is black going to take the two rooks? How 
how good is that position? White's going to have immediately winning a pawn on uh, c6 or f7 if, if black does trade in here. And then let's see, rook d2. That's good enough. Yeah, it's looking... Rook d2 there. is good enough. Okay. So he could take on e1, I think. It's an option, and he doesn't use that option. Queen c7, rook e8, rook e8, take c6, take c6. Okay. White has actually survived the worst of this, it, it almost seems feels. seems like it, right? He played his bloody move knight d5, and it just led to a ton of trades, and white seems fine at the moment. I actually, I, I, I still think black is going to win this game. Okay. But yeah, nothing, I... nothing terrible has happened yet. No, nothing terrible has happened, but the knight is tricky. It's the piece that you want in a low-time situation for the opponent, mm -hmm. not because he's going to blunder any forks in particular, but uh, he's it, it's, it's a very, very unpleasant situation. Black can sort of immediately target the G3 pawn. Look at White has a minute on the clock. He doesn't even know what to do here. You're That's going to run out. You, your position is solid, and in theory, you don't have many weaknesses and problems, but you do, and yeah, you have if... concerns. Like, that's what's going to eat up your clock time. You have concerns about your position. If all but... these pawns could back up a square on the king side, then <laughs> the position would probably be about equal. Yeah. But... Yeah, not happening. That's pretty problematic. The bishop, for the moment, has something to do, right? Like, he's got this purpose on f7, briefly. But black's got lots of ways to sort of neutralize that, and the bishop doesn't really have any other purpose at the moment. Um G4, I think, is already a just just a mistake. I mean, trying I, to keep the knight out. Trying to uh, knight d5, knight d5 is game over. Knight d5, bishop d5, rook e2. Yeah, oh. he immediately blunders. I mean, he blunders oh. the, the, on on the move. Whoa, he misses it. What? He didn't do it. He had five minutes. What is he doing? He's uh, I don't know, that, waiting that, for white to flag or something. That's literally what he's doing, David. That's that 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 right there is a is an example of over stewing. He could have still done it, right, Levy? I mean, yeah, but well, I'm was still on. I did, oh my! Did I can we take a break? <laughs> can we just? <laughs> oh my! Oh my gosh! What's he done? I, I mean, I still think I Black know. is going to win, but now it's going to be infinitely more difficult. Huh? I don't know. So the idea here is knight e5. He wants to play queen d8. If he takes queens off the board, then his king's probably not going to get mated. No, but David, I mean, the guy goes g4. Yeah irreparably damaging his own dark squares. You have one piece that in one move can fork the king and the queen. All you have to see is that you have rook e2 check and queen h2. So, so actually, well, let's, let's just double check that because at the end, there's bishop f7 check. Right. After king f1, queen h2. I'm just, I'm just checking it. So now black has to play king f8, I think. No, king h8. There's no more checks after king, king h8. h8 there's queen Oh, your queen's oh, you, exactly. Yeah, queen B8, the queen comes back. Oh. Yes. All right, so that's the move, huh? It's got to be the move. No, 95 must, must have been winning. I mean, and if it wasn't, no, it, I mean, come on. If the knight yeah. gets to a four, it's game over. Right? And my king F8 would have been a blunder because queen B4 would force the king onto F7 with or without C5 and then queen C4 but check. For a bullet specialist not to play knight d5, because the thing is in bullet, you're always looking attack, 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 knight d5, rook e2, boom. Yeah. I mean, to play, what did he even play? What was the move he played? Rook e7? Rook e7. I, I... It's the positional move, man. Taking that pressure off of f7, neutralizing the bishop, then repositioning the knight. I mean, knight d5 was just the dramatic way to reposition the knight. Also, he'd already done it once this game, huh? Hadn't he? <laughs> he found that same move at, when there was a white pawn on e4. Well, Georg Meyer is stewing over on the other board. He's just got a very comfortable opposite colored bishop in game. Anish Giri recently tweeted uh, in the game between Magnus Carlsen and Yu Yang Yi from uh, where did they recently play? Norway chess. He mm -hmm. said, uh, This is the best opposite colored bishop endgame with equal material in the history of chess. This one that Georg Meyer has might be second best. The candidate, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is this yeah. is getting there. Magnus was plus two in that endgame. Plus two, despite equal material. Uh, okay, Georg so. trades off on f6 himself. Now he's got a protected pass pawn. Effectively, white's already up a pawn because these two c pawns, like, they're not making a passer. Nope. So Georg's sort of up this e4 pawn right now um, after a certain way of thinking. But um, it's Goodmunder who's got 19 seconds left to uh, 
to get the Puffins into the playoffs. The, the, this so let's endgame, see what he can do here. This end game between uh, yeah, yeah be, between Goodmundur uh, and uh, Antoine Minlay. I mean, this 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 is a horrible end game for White. Uh, just I mean, it would be it would be even better if the C pawn was a B pawn. But yeah, okay, we can't have everything in life. Can't have everything. And you could play this forever, and he will. <laughs> he will play this forever. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you're not going to find a knockout, you better at least grind it. Oh, whoa. Can you go like rook d2? Going Maybe aggressive, not. asking the question about rook d2. But, okay. You could also play king e1 first before allowing this stuff. Okay, not concerned. That bishop is so bad. Oh, every so pawn bad. move is just going to hurt you. Yep. Oh, and rook h7. Oops. But Nailed. you know, it might not even be so good because trading h3 for a7 could be double-edged. Right. He might not want to do it. It's a very big commitment, very big, and you allow your opponent yeah. to get fast pawns. He might just like go back to c7 or b7. Yeah, I thought his plan was maybe to play rook b7, king c7, king b8 or something to free his rook with the king. Um, he can't cross over c7 otherwise because of rook takes a7 check. But I will say this. Yeah, so it's one thing that I was going to say, it doesn't make a lot of sense to invest a ton of time and then play rook h3 because uh, then you're also in a time scramble. So yeah, yeah, now he's but again he's gonna play this forever and ever and ever. He's walking his king under the rook now. If he doesn't win this, I'll be extremely extremely surprised. Um, but maybe he won't. Okay, there we go. We're trying again. <laughs> the thing is, at some moment, White is gonna run out of. Well, now f6 is gonna be attacked, right? I mean, he could have even just taken f6 there. wasn't yeah. wasn't like a terrible idea. It wasn't a terrible idea at all. You make a great point. Ah, uh, <laughs> very, very tricky. I don't know. I'm not impressed with how he wandered around without really a plan for a minute there. Nope. Meanwhile, Georg Meyer is basically completely winning. He's now got two connected pass pawns, and he has a plan. He must have traded his H pawn for that G pawn. Yeah, and he's and, and, and Georg masterfully right. blockades the H pawn with the bishop, controlling yeah. all the dark squares. Yeah, just 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 clinical. It's like we've got one one street brawl and one like technical book, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> on one page, we're just reading a treatise on the end game here from Georg. Yeah, just the, just a great game and every single thing right. <laughs> and uh, and Tuan Minlay is looking for every sharp object around him to try to poke at the puffin, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he just can't find any. And now his time is at fifty seconds. And yikes! 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 Yeah. What defense? What defense from the puffin? This could be it. This could be it for Pittsburgh season and for the puffin season. This next forty-five seconds here. Well, I mean, you know, the draw. The draw would indicate. Uh, a playoff, yeah. So they would actually have to play a one-one if I'm not mistaken. Right. The draw so. would go to a bullet game. Wow, it's one minute at 23 seconds. I think he's doing this on purpose. <laughs> he's got. He's, he's got like, a... I need to turn this into a bullet game. Wait a second, was that the right way to play? It was King G2 fine. I thought maybe he had to play King F2, but maybe all this King... is hanging still. So, what's wrong? Rook F6. Oh, I'm so worried that White is great defense by Goodmunder. Great defense, man. That night doesn't have anywhere to go anymore it can't go yeah, now he's finally taking away its support he's ready to dislodge it with rook f5 and black's gonna have to start thinking about getting a draw and not losing right yeah absolutely gary scored the point so baden baden moves on to the finals knight d3 all right this is something this is some attempt knight c1 yeah this is a, okay. oh but bishop c4 bishop. traps the bishop the, the the knight excuse me yeah rook c5 rook c5 Ro or 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 <laughs> rook c5 and trying to play a trick rook d5 check if the knight moves okay bishop bishop d5 is also good wait i think what i think black is in big trouble g5 is hanging or i mean first that pawn and the bishop's yep trouble. huge trouble oh my goodness this could be it this is all the puffins need wow did he flag no, 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 no. Uh oh man, this is total chaos. This is oh my action. my my board bugged out, I guess. Yeah, I think you 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 got so excited, your internet got so excited. <laughs> I got so excited I stopped my internet. Yes. Oh now yeah. on rook g3, there's g7. No, the king's close enough. King f6, rook a6. Yeah, it's just looking like a draw. All right, secure to draw. Wow. I think white was better there at the end. 
So they'll go to bullet. Well, I definitely have some chances. Georg, meanwhile, moves on. He will play the winner of this head to head. Good move. E6, simple enough. E7 could be played. Yeah, I mean, a rook and pawn endgame with, with, with everything kind of so spread apart and all the pawns hanging is definitely a draw. White can even lose this pawn and it's not a problem. We actually do yeah. something. The king is also cut off. Just fill it or it up. Now we're going to see if there's any bullet tricks <laughs> to this position. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, Tuan Minle has won this uh, fill it or position 100 times in his life. Yeah, especially in bullet. All it takes is one wrong pre-move and... And that's it. But yeah, it's the fill it or position, everybody. Very famous position. Uh, if the pawn is not yet crossing the sixth or the third row on, you know, versus the defending side, you kind of put your rook here and you wait for it to do that. Then you drop your rook all the way back and you start giving checks and there's no shelter for the king to hide. If you defend him properly, then the king will actually get in front of the pawn. And when your rook is giving checks from the back, uh, from, from the final uh, row of the board, it's uh, it'll will not work this is just an absolute draw we all right he's number. offered a draw with two seconds i guess there's nothing with a two second increment you just don't pre-move right spend a second on each move and then he's not even going to try it any further so we've got a one one game coming up in a second meanwhile the standings are already affected by this uh textbook game from uh from georg so mm -hmm. that's two points minimum since he's in the championship game it's third Three points for first place, two points for second. So that's two points guaranteed for bottom bottom already. And that would put them at 10 points. And I think pretty much ensure their qualification. Is it possible if Barcelona wins everything else, they could still pass them? Good wonder. No. I guess it's still open. It's still open. Is it the still open? Okay. Still pass them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Still well, possible. What happens. We're waiting for the 1 1. We've got a few minutes before we go. Still possible. Wow. All right. Here it comes. The 1 1. The fate of the puffins and the pawn grabbers. Friendly reminder, everybody, that Pittsburgh does not have the draw odds. They get the white pieces. But if this game ends in a draw, then Reykjavik actually gets the victory and moves on in the finals and we'll get a rematch. Um, Barcelona will actually only miss out on the playoffs if they finish last in the knockouts, losing uh, to to Pittsburgh. So uh, there's some some stuff. Still Bishop d6 to e7 this early. Huh. And Bishop b5 to d3. So that's the thing everybody's doing now. Back yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to fight for this e5 square. I mean, it's bullets, so obviously there is a lot of imperfection with these, yeah. with these variations. The London is... Uh, Knight back to f6, maybe? <laughs> yeah. G6. Yeah, g6 makes sense. It's a good move. He's trying to catch that dark squared bishop, but not lose on the h file immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. F4. He's like, look, my bishop's so bad. Are you sure you want him? <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, this is this this is great. This is perfect bullet chess. One one doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what kind of format you're playing. It's this is the way to go. Uh, these moves make a lot of sense now. So what's next, Gudmundur? Queen b6, bishop d7. All right, good old development. Never forget about development. I think that bishop d6 is a, is a very, very strange move. Yeah. Oh, you know what he had? He had bishop a4. <laughs> on bishop d6 bishop a4 <laughs> yes <laughs> that's funny i was thinking c takes d4 but uh yeah this is the right move and then yeah. collect that very nice all right but oh with the bishop on d4 this is very bad this is very bad uh-oh that e5 pawn is locked in isn't it does he have any chance to trade this and grab this because if not it's going to be tough all right oh nailed yep ouch there's that bullet stuff there's ouch, that ouch, ouch. three seconds against 10, and we're seeing the bullet <laughs> demon make himself felt. So it looks as though, unless something really catastrophic happens in the next 10 seconds, that Tuan Minle will play Georg Meyer in the finals. This is the matchup that I 
had anticipated, uh, but I still think Georg Meyer takes it. I don't think you can overcome that solidity. You've got to have super grandmaster capabilities to overcome it. And yeah, I wonder, do really good bullet players feel calm once they get into this kind of a position or is it nerve wracking forever? Uh, I mean, we see him just win very clinically. Wow. It's not, not a problem. All right, the pawn grabbers spoiling the puffin season there. I mean, it's not over, but you know that was that was a spoiling. Um, yes, that sends the that sends the puffins to the third fourth place match against Kamayonga of the Raptors, and uh, the puffins are going to need that point. Yes, they will. Reykjavik's got to score that point against Barcelona, and well, what do we? What do we need from from Pittsburgh in the final? I mean, there's some teams that are cheering for Pittsburgh to for, for Pittsburgh to win. There are some teams that are cheering for Pittsburgh to lose. It's yeah. uh, it's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh obviously they need to win the the game against uh, Georg to have any chance. Um, he's got to get to got to get that and then win the live club match against the Raptors afterwards. Um, And uh, even then, they need things to end the right way in the other in the other match. Yeah. So <clears throat> remember, everybody, that winning uh, in the in the knockouts does give you three points, and getting second place in the finals as the runner-up gets you two. So R Pittsburgh will be guaranteed at least two points with Juan Minley's performance. Now, if he is able to overcome Georg Meyer, which would be enormous, uh, he would get three points, and then. They would just need to rely on on their fans. Yeah. So, you guys still have time. The live club match will get underway in just under an hour. So I believe like forty eight minutes. So, go into live chess, go support a team. Maybe we can we can create one of the one of the biggest underdog stories. Before today, Pittsburgh was in last place by three points and you know six points away from the top, uh, and yeah. now hey, a couple of good runs, you might make that third or second place spot. So, yeah, this next round will, will really tell us, uh, will really tell us where all the teams fall. Um, and Pittsburgh will still have to win their final. Okay. It's the matchup Meyer versus lay. Yep. Um, Might have three is on the board. There we go. Solid, solid, solid. Oh, oh that's another game popping up. I was like, his knight got moved back. No, it's still on F3. Four. Yep, I've had this position in bullet. <laughs> yep, so now CT5 is a really interesting new idea. So CT5, ED5, right. with knight C3, and then white goes for D3 and E4. Pittsburgh yeah. pawn grabbers have offered a draw. That's that's cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, I mean, you need you need some good moves to uh to win from their situation coming into this week, and uh, they're pulling out all the stops. That must be like opening preparation, right? I yeah. will offer him a draw in the opening to let him know that I'm so confident I can win that bullet game against the draw odds. Um, and Georg Meyer's like, got to say like, well, I think I can win the bullet game, but why not also win this game first? Got to yeah, keep that confidence. He goes for D3 immediately. I've actually like never seen this. <laughs> I'm, mm. I'm a little bit perplexed. Though. Yeah, why can't Black just play DC4? Does Georg just want to trade the Queen? See, on 97. Yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> you know yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah, so he's just uh, just saying that he has a nice and solid position here. Whoa, would you okay. like me to trade the Queens? Oh, yes, I would. Yeah, All right, absolutely. so now if Knight H4, I think his intention is to play G5. So he's this H6 move is some tricky way to try and keep this bishop, basically, because... Georg at some point could play g4, bishop g6, knight h4 to trap it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, trap it for a trade, right? But so with h6, if white plays g4 first, the bishop can always slip away. If white plays knight h4, now he'll play g5. Yeah. And uh, kick that knight, keep the bishop. And, uh, you know, g5 is a bit of a weakening move, but I think with the light squared bishop in there to cover those weaknesses, it's probably playable. Yeah, I think so too. But... You know, we see we see Twan Minlay just very calmly developing. 
Uh, I'm anticipating that Georg is going to move the, the queen somewhere. C2, okay. B2, B3. Uh, B3 doesn't make much sense. Maybe C2. Queen C2 does run into bishop G6 with tempo. Mm -hmm. But maybe E4 is completely fine for white. Just to go E4. And Yeah, I wouldn't... What about bishop D6 to ask you a different question? I mean... Just, oh, no, never mind. Questions answered. Meyer's on your queen C2 train. No, I mean, if, if Georg gets a chance to play the move queen C2 in his opening, then everything is good, right? So... Yeah, I think he wanted to play queen d8, but I guess he'll have to settle for queen c2. Well, now just rook f d1, and then Georg is kind of always slightly better because of this relative passivity of black's pieces. This right. queen needs a space to go to let the rooks connect, I think. I think it's nice for black that this bishop has g6. It's like everything's almost okay for black. This knight has c5 as an option, but only if the queen has a square off of the d file. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So can the queen hang out on a5 or b6? <clears throat> well, or if just run into you a3, know, a3 b4. b4 and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not easy. Yep. And raptors and puffins. It's interesting. an interesting variation in the French, actually. There was a game played very, very recently. Uh... At World Open between Azarov and Shetty, that had this exact variation. I was looking at World Open games, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Black just played extremely solidly. Was very, very slightly worse, but equalized them, uh, and then and then managed the hold. So yeah, I like this ninety-seven from Kamayanga. Yeah, just wants to trade the bishop with the knight on c six and just have very you know very very limited issues yeah get rid of the better of the of the bishop pair but honestly i mean you'd get rid of either one if you could just make one more minor piece trade and and then things should be under control i mean there's still the queenside pawn majority for white to try and advance um it's still basically you know anyone can 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 come up with something in that game yeah but this is a good start from from kamayanga All right. Quite good. So, Min Le picks c8 for the queen. That'll give him knight c5. The slow approach of a New York City siren. Yeah. It's like storybook, all right? And now it's at this block. And now it's just past this block. I think they're preparing an ambulance potentially for Tuan Minleas. He's going to get uh, suffocated by by the boa constrictor that is Georg Meyer. Just a three. When Georg plays a three, it's not a it's not a scholastics a three. You know, I don't know what to do with my position a three. It's a, I'm a I'm gonna play b four c five and and you're yeah. gonna have to space in the space. So that's the kind of a three it is. Yeah, it's a very slowly approaching ambulance. A3. So black could play a5 to forestall it all, and does. And but that immediately weakens some some queenside squares. So we see knight a4. Hops on his squares now. Knight c5 is just out of the picture because of knight b6. Yeah, this is. But that's exactly what he wanted. He played a3 to knight a5, and now he has knight a4. I mean, <laughs> I like I mean, it so that my opponent has no good moves. Wow. B5. That must not be good. There is no way this move is good. Oh, just he felt he had to fight. Five. He thought yeah. he had to fight. And this is what he does. He he I like it. He baits you into playing moves like this. Take, take, knight c3. What's what's the thing? What are you doing? I don't know. Takes, takes, knight c3, b4, keep going. Interesting. He goes back immediately. Yeah. Because otherwise, what what's he doing on the c file here? Isn't it a little bit awkward? I don't know. Yeah, but this gives some options. Yeah, well, maybe wait, wait a second, wait a second. Actually. That is that is a decent. Well, actually, no, it's not a decent point. I thought, okay, bishop g6 is nice. Oh, nice. He wants Georg to play e4 now, so this g2 bishop doesn't come into the picture on c6 and a8. I think e4 would be would run into b4 because the knight would no longer be defending e4. So that's another a tactical mistake as well, huh? Oh man, that that's maybe the only way to beat Georg is to. So wait, but I was confused. I didn't quite understand what takes takes and knight c3. What what? Because you cannot play b4 in that situation. I'm just taking. Um, and white is going to threaten the rook on a8 in a lot of variations. 
Wait, so we're back to uh, we're back to B five CB five. Yeah, I mean, it didn't happen, right? We don't right. need to spend a huge amount of time, but so what's wrong with B four for black <laughs> at the end of all that? I just take it. Okay, black takes back with the bishop or the pawn. With the pawn. Well, I, at that point, I would need to trade the rooks, right? Otherwise, yeah. So okay, takes takes knight c three takes takes rook a eight queen a eight. Yeah. Am I not just like? Happy there? I guess I would play a move like knight e5 to hit the queen. Queen back to c8, evilly, looking at c2 again. Uh, yeah, you might you might be onto something unless unless I have something in that position. Well, it's uh it's uh Tuan Min Lei who showed it to me. I mean, I think that this is just brilliant, this b5 idea. Yeah, you might be right. All right, now we see Georg. This guy Georg thinking a little bit too, right? Yeah, he's given up c4. He's actually completely chucked it. He's not even winning it back, and he's going to try to have this damage structure. We actually just saw him have the exact same damage structure. Yeah. In this game, without wow. a pawn for black. Can you imagine Pittsburgh scoring a win with black against Georg Meyer? That would be. That's that's like the kind of big that they need. They came into this week knowing that that's like what they needed, right? It's not uh, it's not news to them. But I think that white has full compensation for the pawn so far. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think Eric will be like too upset about sacking the C pawn, but he spent a couple of minutes. He's taking this seriously. He knows there's some risks here. Um, what you'd want to play is sort of like attack the C pawn and not not fight that knight on T5. E4 is a move that you feel like you need to play because the knight is in the center and knight c3 queen c3 is great for white with yeah knight c3 queen c3 is the kind of simple thing that that we would yeah. love to see if we were white here but the drawback of e4 is of course that your bishop is no longer participating and you have to find a way to coordinate your pieces right so instead of pressure on c6 there might be some pressure on e4 at some point yeah knight f6 now well i think white definitely has compensation but I don't know about more than that. Like, if you play queen e2 to, to try to get to c4, uh, mm -hmm. what will black play? Queen a6, I guess. Queen a6, I imagine, yeah. And then you can go bishop f1, black can play rook d8, maybe, because you saw the e4 hanging. Right. Let's see. This feels like the kind of critical moment where Georg's going to give us a little bit of thinking. A little bit of thinking here. Whatever move he plays is probably going to be a great one. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe hmm. queen d4. I should have said it. I was going to say maybe queen d4, and then I was like, maybe I'm wrong. I won't say it. <laughs> well, queen d4, queen a6. I mean, we already talked about this. What Does he want to play a move like bishop f1? Is that is that the idea? Yeah, I think so. I still hadn't figured out what would happen after rook d8, though, so kind of left it unfinished there. Queen a6, all right. Oh, well, I guess is the point that you're never winning the pawn because e4 is hanging. So bishop f1, right. like just rook d8? Exactly. That's what I haven't figured out yet. Ah, and after this big trade, that the e4 pawn is simply falling. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you get c4, but you don't get... Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. This queen on d4 suddenly becoming a target. Things are going slowly wrong. Hmm. What what's next? Queen d4, queen a6, the obvious response, and then a long thing from Georg? That's not yeah. the uh that's not the time management I expected right there. Yeah, maybe he just didn't realize how strong how strong it is. This this just the simple rook d8. Like I don't actually need to fully defend c4. I'm I'm fine the way it is. Oh, maybe he thought <clears throat> you know what he maybe maybe he thought maybe he thought that bishop d1, rook a d8, and like bishop c4. Right. But that one doesn't work, right? After rook d4. It also doesn't work, but maybe there's even stronger instead of rook d4, you could just play like queen b7 or something. But like takes, 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 takes. Because ultimately you can make a draw. Right, uh... but rook d4 was winning a piece, wasn't it? Sorry, was it? No, yeah, but bishop a6. Bishop a6, rook d1 check. Rook d1. Rook d1, rook takes a6. Oh, you're playing rook f d8 in your variation. Sorry, I've been in my mind. I've been playing rook. Uh, rook f we're analyzing two different variations. Ah, uh, that is very very funny. The whole time, yeah. But rook f d8 is the the even bigger problem, right? 
Yeah, I can't tell if either one of them is. Yeah, well, I think it'll transpose, won't it? Whichever rook you put. Chat, which rook would you move? Would you, would you move the f8 rook or the a8 rook to d8 if white goes bishop f1? Chat's like, oh, no, no, king h7. If everybody in chat just guessed, they would be better than either player. Yep. Vote chess has shown this. Yes. Rook f8 or rook a8, guys. Get involved in the chat. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, look at him thinking. I, the problem is, I don't. I don't know what else White can possibly do here. I don't see anything left either. Well, I mean, it seems like Gayor kind of walked into this somehow. He must have. He must have missed something with this kind of think afterwards. Yeah, he probably thought it was a straightforward process. And in the uh, chat, I see bad and bad and snowballs decline to draw, you know, from like 10 moves ago or 15 <laughs> moves ago. It's, it's just there, like, as your position gets worse. Decline to draw, decline to draw. draw. The, the draw was offered, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Gotta forget that. Gotta not read it. Between Reykjavik and Barcelona, we've been informed, yeah. obviously, uh, Pittsburgh needs Barcelona to win against the Puppets. So, yeah. I don't know how you're going to do that here. <laughs> it's a it's a minor piece in a rook endgame with completely symmetrical structure. Every pawn that black has is not on a square that it can be targeted. Yeah. Uh, and not to, well, you know, maybe you can play for a win with a move like f5 here. I don't know. This is, this is just what I'm thinking. Play like pawn to f5, and it's just stirring the pot a little bit. Like if I play king d3, maybe knight b4 actually, picking up a2. But wouldn't the king come to e5 though? So knight before like king e3? No, no, I'm saying from the from the moment you play f5. Ah, king the white e5. king always want to come up. Knight before anyway, with the idea Four. of knight d3. With some tactical. I'm I'm about to play nonsense. king e7 and mate you, by the way. Yeah. We'll see about <laughs> it. We'll see about it. All right. I go rook d1. Yeah, rook, whoa. Just stopping knight d3, that's all. So no, rook, you know, d1, rook, d, rook, rook d1, rook d6, and I think you resign. Why would you make me resign? That's right. Well, knight c6, right? And then you just you lose the bishop. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. This knight, man, this freaking knight. We should have wow. totally used that knight in, in that other game. But Well, maybe it's a good time for him to be thinking. Maybe f5 is a nice move. I mean, it is thematic to try and gain some space. If king e5 is as bad as I just made it look, then this would be the time to play f5. I'd be scared. I think I would be a little bit more afraid than, than, than excited to play king e5. I'm like, I'm definitely overlooking some sort of some sort of de geometrical motif to get my king stuff. One of those funny things where you think you're penetrating and then you get your own king checkmated. Yep. Uh, all so. right. Well, f5 is a nice chance. What else could he be thinking about here? He's got just knight b4 without anything. He's got trade on c4 and then knight b4. So he ends up just taking... Maybe his idea is to play bc4, f5. Well, now you can still play f5, right? It's it's all it's yep. all still there. F5 is still there. Hmm. Wow, man. I thought I thought that you guys were just uh were just making that stuff up. Like Rosman is improving his skills. I thought that was a joke, but it was actually said <laughs> in <the> chat. <laughs> That's good, Levy. I always aim to improve. And uh, King E5. Uh oh. Am I gonna Am I gonna lose if I'm white now? Is he gonna Is he gonna lose to me? Well, I definitely gotta improve my chess skills, dude. I mean, chess is this never ending journey of improvement, right? Self improvement, yeah. self actualization. You know, the uh, the Maslow hierarchy. So. Knight to b4. Oh man, this is looking like. Uh, well, is it? Wait, looking, isn't... It's looking dangerous. This is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Rook c3 to. Why did I have to say king e5? Why did I do that to him? First of all, why do you have to listen to you? He could have yes. just. He could have just not listened to you. <laughs> he could have just been like, I don't know if a draw was offered. I don't know what D Proust is saying. Please. Yeah. Just so playing my game. Man. That's a that's 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 a rough one. That's a rough one. Mm. Knight b4 is really problematic because if you play rook yeah. c3, you lose the a2 pawn, and yep. again psychologically, it's really difficult to recover from that. 
Yeah, uh, it is. The other thing is that I, I always am threatening something like rook d6 and knight c6. And am, yeah. are you going to go king f6 at that point? <laughs> are you fully invested? Okay, rook d1 was played. So now the last time we talked about this, whoa, whoa, you whoa, played whoa. rook to d6, and then the pieces were kind of pinned to each other what? What? and couldn't what? stop knight c6. What is he doing? Wait, but rook d6 just wins everything. I don't understand. Rook d6 is, that's it. Knight c6 is unavoidable. The game is literally over. It seemed pretty convincing last time you did this to me. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> Rook d6. How about king? King where, David? I don't know. I, I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> king, uh, f4, king f4. King f4. E5. Right? E5 resigns. Oh my goodness, yeah. David. This is. This oh my. Is, okay. This seems con conclusive. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, also, I apologize if I'm supposed to contain my excitement on rook c4. I mean, a pawn is a pawn, but rook d6 wins the game. It's just yeah. Eight, Eight minutes on the clock. How do you not play rook d6? Just... I guess he's got knight a2 and knight c6 threatened here. So he's like, I'm up two pawns after rook c4. I'm not looking anymore. Yes. Maybe. Yes. You know, maybe from a distance, he was also dead set on this variation. Of course, this is still very good for black. Don't get that twisted. Knight c6 yeah. is still a big threat. Um, yeah. Any discovered attack like bishop c5, you just play knight d5 and black is probably just still completely winning. Knight on d5 would still kind of trap white's king. So he can wait for white to play f4 at some point <laughs> there it is. he's taking the plunge david he's played king f6 king f6 let's go uh we might even get king g7 king takes h7 well journey. king f6 was better than sitting around on e5 forever that was somehow like a poison square do you know that very variant of chess mind mind square where like each player writes down a square at the beginning of the game on like a hidden square and there's like a mine on that square uh you know what just for the sake of the show i'm gonna say yes i know exactly you know. what you're talking about yes anyway E5 was somehow a really ill-fated square for the white king. It was like the any time he was on that square, white was losing. So yes. he should be happy to book it to G7. Listen, what have we learned throughout the history of time? Does the leader of his, you know, his his people, yeah. is he the first one on the front lines of the war? You know what? Don't answer. Rarely. I'm a really bad historian. And yeah. if the emperor used to ride on horseback and like be the first one in the army, I'm really Sometimes sorry. they did. Sometimes they did. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Listen, you gotta, you gotta send, you gotta send the, the, the soldiers to fight, right? Not you. Look where the king is. <laughs> yeah. What is the, what is going he's, on here with the white king? He's controlling the promotion square of this H pawn. He's uh, getting his hands dirty. I mean, honestly, this looks like a mess, Levy. This like rook takes c4 versus rook d6. This is looking really messy. No, I mean rook rook d6 was resignation. This is actually. If Black doesn't play this, well, I mean, I don't know what. Why, why did he go G five and not take the H pawn? He wanted it to be even better. And what? Why did Black not play? Well, now Black just gives this check, forces the king to the very back row, and plays E five. And at that point, it's it's resignation again. Uh, mm -hmm. I think because you just back to the old resignation. Right. Yeah. King huh. D, King D six makes a lot of sense. King D six is very smart to always get to play E five. But why did White not just take the H pawn? I mean, you played. King g7 to take the h pawn, right? Yeah. I don't know. People are greedy, Levy. They I don't just, know. They can't okay. accept what they have. Be happy so, David, with it. Here's a variation for you. So yeah. King d6, King sure. h7, e5. Yeah. yeah. Let's say, I mean, I don't know, bishop b2, rook g4. Yeah. And you get what you want. You get the rook on g4 covering g6. You get the pawn on e5. But now I can play like rookie one, and at least I have something, maybe, right? E-pawn like, just keeps coming forward, right? Yeah, um, maybe it does, just E4, yeah. Maybe you're I mean, right. if, the, if the only pass pawn on the board is the E-pawn, then the king on H7 is way out of play. If white has a pass G or H-pawn, then the king on H7 is great. So, I think, I, white, I think black just made a horrible mistake, by the way. Doesn't white have bishop G7 here? Rook f7 allowing bishop g7. Well, what was he supposed to do? e5 to stop that, right? Of course, he was supposed to play. Oh my, I'm going, David, I'm going crazy. Is this a comedy now? What is going on? e5? Eagle. I mean, you play. <laughs> we see the Armenian Eagles account in, in chat saying king d6 is a strong move to play e5. e5. Yeah, yeah. Rook d4. Why you? Why didn't you play e5? Yeah, he also was... said, he also said that missing rook d6 was not GM, not GM skill. And I think that could be said for like the last six moves, Levy, all of them. Yeah, Each I'm very confused. Say, not GM skill. No, but 
known, but now black is almost in danger of losing because if you lose both those pawns, you you will lose. <laughs> yeah, and the lose. bishop will suddenly be in good position. And you know, black would love a knight on f5, but please explain to me how that's possible. Okay, so like if this were a bullet game, Levy, I could see like this kind of stuff happening. Heck, it happens to me when I play bullet. But like he's got like he had 10 minutes, right? I mean, they've spent like two or three minutes thinking about some of these moves. I have even more bad news. Like if black really tries to get a knight to f5, for example, king c5, you yeah. might even lose with like rook takes d5, king h7, king g6. But for example, like king h7, knight e7 to try to play knight f5 and, and, and pin. There's like rook d7. I mean, suddenly everything white has is coming forward and your, your entire position is falling apart. So, Whoa. oh, and if you go to c6 with the same idea, that would prevent rook d7. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still it's still very very unpleasant. I mean, I can yeah, move my... 97, but I mean, even 97 does that does that really do everything he wants after king to h8? I guess at least white didn't get a pass pawn yet, but right. I mean, he got an extra pawn. His bishops got control of e5 and f6, so your e pawn's not running anywhere. Um, so white is like totally in the game there. Let's see what's happening. Rook F2. Right. H4. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I just don't. This, this game was... A, was they was wanted very... to make it more interesting. They wanted to make it more interesting. They kept us from watching the championship game, right? I mean, that's that's success in a sense. Let me see how Georg's doing here. He's still down that doubled C pawn to Tuan Min Lei. He's having a real rough time here. The idea is to try and trap this bishop. Is he playing like rook f8 next or something? I'm not sure, yeah. He's really down on time. He's, I mean, I didn't even need to see the position. I just saw the one minute against seven and knew that Georg's been struggling the whole time since, uh, since the queen d4 fiasco. Yeah, it looked very bad. D5 looked like a like a great way to stir up some trouble. And yeah, I got everything there. Oof. Yeah, Georg looks looks in trouble. I mean, once the B2 pawn falls, the C pawn rolls, and wow, Tuan Minlay will score three points. And that's right. He's tried Rook F8 though, so there is this big threat of F5. What's the answer? Just to queen the C pawn and and lose the bishop, maybe, huh? Yeah, I mean, just bishop b2. Like, bishop if b2. f5, uh, first of all, maybe just c3 or give a check on e5 and then c3. Right, f5, give a check. King g1, not h1. And then maybe c3. We leave that pawn on e4 to kill white's bishop, so they're not really up a piece till they can get that bishop out. And just run the c pawn down, simple as can be. That still looks winning for black, huh? Yeah, this does not look good at all. Oh. Over here, we had rook h2, rook d4, which is what I was expecting covering the pawn. Um, well, black needs a tactic. Sometimes you're in a position like this, and you're like, I absolutely need a tactic. Yes. <sighs> Somebody yes, yes. get me a tactic. Man, this is this is a, a huge collapse in the Barcelona Reykjavik match. Black was just cruise control. I mean, he he rocked back in the pilot's chair, you know, clicked autopilot, took a nap. Yeah. And that's when the White King wandered in. And then White played a couple of very strange moves, very questionable moves. Put the king on g7, did not take the pawn, hit the king on h6, and then Black did not play e5 to keep the bishop out, and, and now it's... Well, I think only white can win now. That's, that's really it. You can no longer play e5 because it doesn't matter. The bishop still hits the pawn, and rook e4 picks up the pawn. I think black is walking a tightrope, David. I think black yeah. is actually going to lose this one. Really in trouble. I mean, he's at the point where maybe he should have grabbed the pawn on a2 last move instead of going to h2. Um, to at least get the A pawn as a counterplay, then head back to H2 and try and defend the disaster over there. So at least you're doing something in the meantime. Mm -hmm. um, but as it is, it's like he's got nothing going on. And uh, Lei actually retreated his rook to B7 to avoid getting trapped here. 
Um, so Georg is perhaps still slightly in this game. Mm -hmm. I don't know, rook c8 he goes, so then on bishop takes b2, he can uh, <laughs> he can get behind these pass, this pass c pawn with rook takes c5. Yes. And, uh, you know, largely find his find his way out of danger. Well, he's down to his seconds here to to fix this. Down to his final seconds. Yeah, the load time definitely doesn't help, but the position uh, looking a little bit more salvageable. Black is going to have to play very precisely. Yeah. Um, and Got to grab the A pawn here. Yes, now c3, rook c5, rook a3. Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting better. It's getting much better for, for white than it was. Yeah, he's only fighting one pawn, one pass pawn. He's got his rook behind it in every scenario. And the black king is currently locked out of the game, right? So he could even put like a rook on c8 or something and c7 or c8. And there's going to be some work for the black king to get out. Mm -hmm. While his own king could try to approach the, the c pawn. Mm -hmm. I'm, not sure he's, I'm not sure he's even losing. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's getting better and better every sentence. Say it, let me say it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm liking this very much. I mean, it was, it, it was very, very bad. I, I feel like Georg Meyer at this point can already throw a party. Ah, uh, there's a root. There's a root for your king. Yeah, H5 is a uh, is, is quite a nice move. Oh, he wants to play G5, Levy. He's like, are you sure you checked everything before you played H5 in two seconds? Yeah, that's that's some clever stuff. So he's looking at something like bishop a2, g5, fg, f6 with some counterplay, right? I mean, yes. some chance to collect a bunch of black pawns whenever the c pawn goes to c2, try and like go back to the c file and hope that you've still got him caught. Can you play like bishop e8, bishop a4, c2? <laughs> yeah, you could. Am I, am I too fancy for my own bit? That might even be the best score for the bishop here. Um... Oh, what did he do? What did he do? Rook a2. That makes sense. Okay, Gerard keeps the king on the king side. That c pawn's getting close to the end. Yeah, c2 is looking way too logical to stop. I mean, bishop d3, bishop uh -oh. d3. Oh. Bishop d3, rook a3 wins. Ah, that's even nicer. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a super problem. Bishop e2, c1, queens wins. So he's almost out of moves, and that's the end. Tuan Min Le in his debut is going to knock out Georg Meyer. Yeah, Georg saw it. He just didn't have anything else to do. So he played it, and then when he found Rook A3, he resigned. That is extremely impressive. Let's just see how Reykjavik versus... Wow. Uh... So, yeah, so, back to our sin. mess over here. Back to our mm -hmm. disaster. Uh, the Black King has come into an interesting position, defending the Jeep on himself. The White Rook is going to have a hard time covering H4 and checking on the F-file. So Baden um, Baden actually, despite losing, ironically, yeah. clicked his first place in the division. <laughs> yeah, that two points that they got was pretty big just now, right? I mean, yes, winning, so winning that first match got them two points, put them basically for sure into the Summer Series Championships pretty much. Let's see. Yes, because they get, they get uh, two points and... Right, so Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh now. Well, Pittsburgh also has to play later, so let's let's yeah. not let's not forget about that. Okay, so now he's all about that a pawn. His bishop comes to an awkward position. Gotta say, he's gearing up to trade his h pawn for the a pawn. That does get him rook a seven. Mm -hmm. So rook a seven. Whoa, 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 why didn't he take with the rook? Am, am uh, I... Because he wanted to continue the disaster. I mean, it was definitely wrong. <laughs> wait, 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 no, but, what, but why not rook h4? Rook h4, you cannot move anything. I just... No, 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 you're absolutely right. There, there's no reason. As I said, it was just in order to blunder. That's the only reason for that move. But this game is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, a comedy show. At this point. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, of, of course, I mean, respect to the players. I mean, you know. This bishop can even come back to f6 now because the knight uh, let it out. But why not play rook h? I mean, I just don't. Okay. Now bishop f6. A <laughs> lot of mistakes this game, but you know, it's it's still it's still not perfect. You still have to win this. Yeah. You play the wrong couple of moves, you could run into trouble. 
those knights like stuck here stopping King G6 and we Okay, bishop f6 makes sense. If e3, yeah. there is there is rook e7, king yeah. f8. Uh, rook e7, king f8, rook e3, rook a5. I mean, not so fast. Bishop g7, king f7, and you're actually not mating me. And not only that, you don't even have a check. Not mating, and our own king is trapped. You're mm. going to lose. Okay. How about king g7 here, then? Super brilliant, Mark. Mm. But then knight f5 check, king takes g6, e2. <laughs> the knight stops rookie. Oh, and then king g62. Yeah. Okay, so that's not brilliant. He played king g7. He did. Wait, but after e2, is it just after the draw? knight of five e2? Bishop c3? No. Oh, yeah, there's still bishop c3. Lucky. <laughs> no, but bishop c3, maybe just attack. Uh, I don't know, actually. He gives a check. Does he have rook d8 here? Rook d8, rook e8, maybe. Oh, that's easier. Rook d8, rook e8. Okay, king c7. Now you have rook e8. You can give a check and play knight f3. Knight h4, knight f3, maybe. Or mm -hmm. king d7 back, by the way. King d7 back is a draw, I think. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. All right, knight set it to f3. This is, king this came is... to h5 instead of f7. Not sure mm -hmm. what that was about. We're going to see the bishop attacked by the rook here, maybe? Yeah, so rook c2. Can you play a6? Rook takes c3, a7. Rook to a3, and you can't queen. Okay, g6. so instead the g-pawn has to go, because the knight's blocking the rook from coming to g3. Yeah, so rook c3, yeah, you have to take. Just go take it. I mean, you, yeah. you just went there, right? So Just do it. G7, so he's, does he have rook check on c5 to go to g5? Is that... <laughs> or rook c1 to go rook h1 rook g1 rook c1 to go rook h1 g1 wow or wait just queen just queen man oh yeah just queen because you have rook eight no wait oh, you know rook, rook h3 king g4 oh. okay oh my oh my gosh this is <laughs> he probably will play eight rook seconds. c1 rook okay. c5 goes this way king h6 oh this is just insane it's 10 seconds per player uh, what? Uh oh. King. Oh, is it if a the king draw? went up? He had maybe knight g5 trapping. Oh, oh, knight g5 is brutal. Wow, was it actually a draw? Are the players just going to take a draw here? I think so. Or is he going to go for king h7? No, it's just going to be a draw. Yeah. He claims it. Yeah. Wow, what a game. Oh. <laughs> well, I'd be kicking myself if I were Barcelona. I'd I would just be, kick. honestly, I would just be kicking myself, like for even playing a game like that. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah, for either side. <sighs> I mean, if you're white, you can at least feel like you maybe escaped. Like if you noticed rook d6 or some of the other things. Um, yeah, maybe, I, there, there's also probably so many blunders at the end there in the time travel you could analyze with a computer. But uh, I mean, 10 seconds on the clock, it's... <clears throat> yeah. Yes. All right. So they're going to have to go to bullet to decide their fates. Um, obviously, each side still needs this point. <laughs> Basically, the deal is if, uh, if uh, the Puffins get this point, then even if Barcelona wins their live club match, they end up tied. Right. Um, so Barcelona, if they, if they can get this point, if they can get third place in this knockout and win their club match, then they'll finish ahead of the Puffins. Yes. Um, if they win this and then lose their club match, then I think it would be Pittsburgh who would tie the Puffins. Mm -hmm. So I guess Pittsburgh also, who would they prefer? Which way would they prefer it? I don't know. Pittsburgh's just trying to win. Yeah. If they get six out of a six available points today, they're gangsters. And whatever that whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you cannot have a better performance than six out of six. You can't yeah. have seven out of six. You, you, you can't. No, they would have been done. They would have done twice as well in one week as they did in two previous weeks. Yeah, so that's a four x force improvement multiplier of power. Yep. All right, then they're off. All right.
So the draw odds should be with black. The puffins here bring out a hippo. Fight. I have no idea which of these guys is better at bullet. We'll we'll know soon enough. D5. Uh oh, this feels like a really bad French now. It went from an unknown hippo to a bad French, right? Yeah. Well, that can sometimes happen in these kind of E6, B6, D5 situations, but uh, um, I mean, it's bullet. Uh, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm not super sort of yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they can do whatever they want. But whites played like no move that's bad in the French. Blacks played A6 and D5 and two moves, right? So clearly a tough, tough opening exactly. for black to start with. So now. I I think black is also in like very significant trouble already. I mean, if you got to play knight f5 here, and if you don't play knight f5, I think you just lose. And knight f5, g4, what's his follow? Got to be pretty sure about that one. Uh, can you take h6? Yes. So, right. So g4, knight h6. And actually, g4 would be really nice. <laughs> you would get the bishop back to g7. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Didn't even see this. All right, probably, so just take it. Just take it. I mean, what you cannot take with the G pawn, right? Because Queen G three is probably decisive. Some attack with like, ugh. I don't like that move. You don't like Bishop G five. I don't know. Not not really. I don't know. It's gonna let Black trade some pieces and make oh, the position a little simple. That's good. Yeah, Queen D six, F six. Good. The Queen should probably stay on the board for White. Can he go to F three without anything bad happening? Queen f3, h6. No, but queen f3, yeah, but now exactly. H, just like you said, h6. h6, maybe knight f7. I don't know that it's going to work out, but uh, all right, simpler. Knight h3. Wow, e5. Black is fighting. All right. Showing <laughs> that the opening does not matter. Queen e5. Got to go queen e5. Don't even think about rook e5. Yeah. I swear. You told oh. him not to think about it, but he thought about it. Oh, wait, wait, this is just losing. No, but you're losing now because knight d6 and bishop b7. You can't defend the rook. Yeah, he. Bishop b7. Tie up? Every. Yeah. This is pinned in so many directions. It's hard to keep track of. Okay, triple, triple on the e triple. file. Let's go. Triple. It's not that hard to find that move, huh? Five, and then that's it. Four, three, two, takes it. All right. Goes to the end game. Still got to worry about back rank mate, even in the end game. Rook's coming to. B2. It's over. I mean, 96. 96 is super nice here. These guys worked very hard the last game to give us a heart attack and change the result of their game. But I, it, yeah. it, I mean, they're playing this uh, bullet end game much better than the, uh, than the 10 yeah. minute end game. Um, the fight for the E5 square. Some, yeah, some, some struggle still, but he can clean these things up. Bring the rook to H3 or C2. Like that C pawn. And uh yeah, he's uh he's doing it. What do they say in Iceland? Sail at home. We're sailing at home. Something about the ship and the sailing. That I I don't know. <laughs> okay. I went to Iceland and I don't even know. And you don't know what they say about sailing at home? We're sailing at home. He's definitely sailing at home here. He's got it. B2? No. Not not that degree of precision. Oh, yeah, he's got five seconds. Yep. And he's wow. got it. The Puffins, the Puffins, the Puffins. Yes, the Puffins get the win over Barcelona. Uh, we are going to take a quick break before we get into uh, our final live match of the day. That's going yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's going to be our, our two remaining teams in the last live club match. Of all of Group B, probably group we will B. also have some prize announcements and an interview with a very special guest. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I promise not to.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are happy to be joined by the PCL Commissioner, Greg Shahadi. Greg, welcome. What's up, everyone? Happy is a strong word, but, uh, you know, we, we, Greg, like, Greg, <laughs> Greg, Greg was uh, cheering in the chat for Danny Wrench, and I think he was blindsided by the fact that he would have to join us. But um, <laughs> the good thing is that Greg is actually not playing any of the games that we have coming up, right? So we, we, uh, we can, talk some I can do a Danny Wrench impression. <laughs> we would love that. I think I just have to say Bob's your uncle like over and over and over, right? Yeah. Can you do Basically. an impression of Danny Wrench doing an impression of an Australian dingo hunter? <laughs> I have a bad, I have, I'm bad at accents. I'm really uh, bad. Okay. Sorry. Sounds, uh, sounds complicated. Well, I think uh, Greg is, if anybody doesn't know, he's the commissioner, the mastermind of, uh, of everything league related, US and Pro Chess League. Uh, so David and I had some questions for him, which hopefully will shed some insight onto how the qualifiers work, what teams are making it and so on. So David, uh, what do you have for Greg? Yeah. I mean, the first question is Greg, do you have a schedule for the qualifiers? Can you tell us any secret news about who's going to be playing or maybe even more importantly, who's going to be hosting? I mean, do Levy and I have jobs? <laughs> You're both fired. <laughs> sorry. I, oh sorry, man, it's rough. Right now. This is, I, I saw it coming. Um, the qualifiers are going to be a lot different than the past years. In the past years, mm -hmm. we just had one qualifier. Everyone played on the same day. That was it. This time, um, teams are going to get multiple chances to qualify, and there's going to be four separate days, at least, that these qualifiers are going to take place on. So let's um, say I'm the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers, yeah. and I just finished fourth in the summer division B. Yeah. and were, was relegated a couple weeks before that, um, and I'm trying to qualify again. Can I play in all four qualifiers? Theoretically, yes. Mm. It, it depends. Not every team will be able to maybe play in all four. But I see. Might be. Um, the format will be released soon. Okay. So you're not going to tell us the format today? Uh, well, I can, but it's like we're still tweaking some things, so I don't want to tell you something, and then it turns out to be just a little bit different, you know, than everyone yell at me. All right. Well, we've got three teams here that probably want to qualify. Can you tell me for sure whether these teams will be allowed to participate in the qualifiers? So it's Barcelona, Reykjavik, Barcelona. Pittsburgh. Reykjavik, all Pittsburgh. three of those will definitely have a chance to qualify. Okay. So all three of those teams, because yeah. I mean, their fans are the ones watching the most right now. So we they would want to know. Um, I, I want to give them every chance that they can possibly have. But we, we have... A lot of teams, like a lot of really exciting teams who've signed up for these qualifiers. Um, I'd say half, less than half of the teams are returning, and half of them are like brand new teams that have never played in the PCL before, but like really strong. You know, we got like a second Chinese team. Nice. Like super, you know, they have a lot of strong players on the nice. list. Uh, we got a few teams from India with a lot of okay. strong players on the list. Um, How about Antarctica? Uh, we got, yeah, I mean, they got a few polar bears. Okay. Polar bears playing. Nice. Okay, uh, so another team from China, another team from from India. That's that's good. China definitely has the strength to field more than one top team now. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Greg, I have a fun question. So that we've seen a lot of a lot of fan involvement uh, in pro chess. Like, I mean, we we the summer series in particular, like a team like Reykjavik, had you know, because of, of, of their fan success uh, have won three club matches because of just their, you know, the amount of players that compete on their team. And we also have this element of a Twitter vote. So my question for you is, uh, what would you allow fans to decide that you do in life with a Twitter vote? Like make some sort of meal or, you know, walk barefoot on concrete. I don't know. What, what excites you? About <laughs> so I, is this like, am I... Am I tied to this decision right now? Like I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just just hypothetically, just for fun. I mean, maybe like what kind of donut I'm gonna eat. That that's, that's that's like a good poll, right? Yeah, it's a little tame. You know, I you know, okay. What what else, what else should it be? Like what what <laughs> kind of openings I'll play in all my chess games forever? <laughs> oh, don't let them decide that. God, no. Well, rather let them decide the that you can be in every opening, every game, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a weird question, i got to be honest. That's not what I expected on this show. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, there's been one point scored for the Barcelona Raptors fan club. They're in a situation where they need to win this live club match, Greg, in order to tie with yeah. uh, the Puffins for second place. 
in the division. Um, what what teams do you think are likely to win from this uh, from the summer series? Who do you see? Who do you see eventually? I guess winning the championships from this group or overall? Overall, gosh. I, I mean, it's choice. such a brand new format, you know, with all the all the fans playing. Like, it's really hard for me to just get a sense for what's going on, like before mm -hmm. seeing play, because we haven't even seen the teams in Group C and Group D. That's right. Uh, really hesitant to make any predictions okay it's a professional answer we, we, we like yeah. it we like that on the show all right then i've got a more general question for you about predictions like we saw a bunch of teams repeat in the final four in the in the pcl um yeah. season right three of four teams um and so my question is do you think we're going to see a lot more like repeats in the next you know one or two years where teams like st louis Chengdu, baden baden the gnomes the armenia eagles like are you going to see those teams showing up again and again in the final four, or are you going to see uh, new teams? I, I don't think so. Top? I think, you, you know, both, like there was two of those teams that got a little bit fortunate. Well, fortunate is a strong word, but like Chengdu, they were done against Minnesota. Like Bartholomew found rookie eight check, just a one move win, their season's over. So, I mean, that's one team that didn't have to make it. Mm -hmm. um, even St. Louis, got pushed to the limit in the first round of the playoffs. They had an eight, eight tie, you know, they could have one extra half point. They're not in the final. They're not the champions. Um, so I think, I think these teams are good. They're going to be perennial powerhouses, but there's other good teams as well that can beat them. There's new teams that are going to join the league. They're going to be super strong because this qualifier series, if you get through it, uh, you're going to be a really good team. Right. So yeah, I like, like to be this, this year was a new team that was really good. Totally. I mean, they had a they had a rough match against Armenia in the quarterfinals, but obviously they're capable of winning that match. Okay. So these top four teams, top five, top six teams, you see them like being in the conversation, but not always making it to the finals. Yeah, I think they're just they're just teams that are always at, at the moment they seem like they're always going to be pretty good. Um, you know, things can change, but you know they have good managed good management they have good players like associated with the team good blitz players good rapid players so i think they're always going to be dangerous but you can't just count on them to make it make it through the final okay cool well, speaking speaking of our finals we're uh we're about to tune into the final live club match of group b greg always a pleasure thank you for joining okay. us thanks for having me um so we're going to let you go, let you enjoy the games, hang out and chat. Sorry we couldn't get Danny, but, I mean, we got something even better, some would argue. So um, that's Greg Shahadi, commissioner of the league. So let's say goodbye to Greg, and uh, let's, let's, let's watch some chess games. Let's see what Bye happens. Bye, everybody. Um, Bye, Greg. I'm predicting a really close match, Levy. We've had two drawn matches so far this year, and it's super thrilling when the matches are that close. I think we're going to see another one now. Yeah, actually, what's interesting is that the, um, <laughs> I think the Armenia Eagles official account is playing in this. Oh, yeah. So they, I, I don't know why. Uh, does, does it matter? I mean, Armenia is not even in the division, so they, That's right. they really don't care. But just having a little bit of fun, getting involved. Artak likes playing chess, man. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, I think does. that I think that Artak might be a little bit of a fan of the United States of America. I might be over guessing here, but um, he's he's played for American teams only in the uh, PCL Summer Series so far. He played for San Francisco. Now he's playing for Pittsburgh. So I think Artak might be a little bit of an America file. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, he's yeah. having a fight here on on board two. He's the board two rep for Pittsburgh. Yeah, very yeah. tense match already. 3 2. We see the scoreline. Yeah. Uh, and we've got some, some, some interesting scenarios. Obviously, both teams would like to win. Actually, if Pittsburgh wins, they, they steal the three spot. They, they actually yeah. make the playoffs, which, it would be, which would be crazy. I mean, they got to throw a parade for Tuan Min Lei. They got yeah. to get that guy a statue for, for his win with Black against Georg Meyer. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh would go into that fan vote on Twitter. A lot of people think that they would 
have good chances in, in the fan vote. Yes. What do you think of uh, Artok's position here? He's got this funny pawn structure, like strong in the center, weak on the sides. I like what he's got. Uh, but if we count the pawns, he actually yep. is down one, right? Yeah, so that's correct. I like what he has, but he is down a pawn. I mean, if you give black another pawn, sure, maybe. But mm -hmm. a pawn is a pawn. White just kind of has to slowly chip away, play rook h1, take the file, bishop d3, slowly improve the position. Um, of course, trading off all the rooks is good for, for the side that, uh, that has the extra pawn. It has the extra pawn. Don't want to trade everything. That's the other thing. So, Yeah. I think maybe black didn't want to trade the H pawn because that gives white this sort of like pressure valve to start trading some stuff off where they were a little bit cramped in the center. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll see how Lola Mento handles this so far doing well against, uh, the Armenia Eagles manager. Um, all right. And my other game here, we get some more Tuan Min Le. here. He's playing with white trying to maneuver an equal material queen and knight show their famous strength against the bishop. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look. Complex. Complex. What do you prefer in this kind of position? I mean, you definitely have to prefer the knight. The bishop can't do anything with a pawn on e4. You just get rid um, of it. Make it disappear. Oop. Yeah, you just sort of like sit there and hope to defend. Right. But I don't know. I don't know that white has enough to make progress. Can they play g4 knight f5 at some point? They're going to have to do something to make a threat, and the only point to really attack right now is g7. Well, he goes g4, but you can even play a move like queen e5 now to just pin the queen to the knight. Hmm. Like I might queen not e like it if you did that. Yeah, so for example, queen e5, queen d7, bishop e6, queen e7, and maybe just go back to d5, although that does create a weakness potentially in e5, but it should just be a draw. It's a very equal position. Mm -hmm. not, enough, not enough of a weakness to decide that game, huh? Yeah. All right, let's see what he did. He played queen e5, queen d7, headed your way. It's it's you always... You, could, you think you could hold with queen e6? You yeah, think you I could think... Do that end game? Well, I would just go bishop e6. I mean, if it's a choice between bishop... And, I mean, also, yes, probably. Probably. Okay. But no reason to lose the pawn, just bishop e6. And... Yeah. yeah, there it is. Queen e7, bishop d5. It's a very... It's an abstract advantage of pawns, e5. And... Yeah. Could black also just sit here? No, because knight e8 might come. So back to d5, like you say. And now. Yeah, I mean, if you take on e5 takes and play like knight b5, and you're like, well, I'm going to go to c3. I'll bring my king. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do. So I'm, I'm going to move my king to h4 as black. Or g5 attack on the uh, on that side of the board because you can't really get your f pawn out. Since right. Pawn. Yeah, I don't really see how my white king should approach these doubled isolated pawns if I give them to the opponent. But Pittsburgh is building that lead, David. It is five and a half, two and a half. So wow, they're ruining Barcelona's day today. Golda Story, by the way, scored a point for Pittsburgh, defeating an 1100 rated player. There it is. They're already Wait on their Tory. Six point five. This might be like the quickest club match. That's a notable lead. I thought this was going to be really close. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, Pittsburgh has a rating advantage on these, on all these nineteen hundreds in the middle of the, of the match here. Pittsburgh up four points now. Wow. And and these, yeah. it, it's it's pretty close. I mean, Pittsburgh's got heavy hitters, but. And maybe some slight, some slight advantages on rating, but it's a very close match. But Pittsburgh is is doing very, very well. Check out, let's check out Art Vega. He's um, the player who I've seen play the absolute most total yeah. matches here in the summer series. Kind of an ultra fan, and uh, he's got an equal material night end game. Looks mm -hmm. like. Um, King e2, 
yep. prudently keeping that knight away. That's just, just just equal, right? I mean, losing this would be more impressive than winning it, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, if either player wins, you'll fault the loser, not not praise the winner, huh? Yeah, like that famous interview with Russell Westbrook. Did the Jazz lose this one? Did the Jazz win this one, or did you guys lose this one? It's like, uh, what? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess black can play e5 and knight d4 here, force the knight into d4, force some simplifications, and the isolated pawn is not such a big disadvantage, really. Yep. Okay. Well, fairly balanced there. Let's see what else. 7.5, 3.5, four-point lead. How's, how's our attack coming along? Still okay. got nice positions for his knights. Still down a pawn. Well, one knight is now gone, but uh, nothing but isolated pawns. Ooh. Yeah, the structure is just not the best for black, huh? It's uh, yeah. well, a five. Neither player likes pawn structure. In this no, game. they all want isolated pawns. One, two, three, four, five. We've this got might be the nine isolated pawns now. This might literally be the worst pawn structure I have ever seen. Worst collective pawn structure. All our talk needs is his F pawn. Our talk is like incredible in the end game, man. Like he's won some end games that I would have struggled to draw. Why king b4? I don't understand this move. Like you, you have passed pawns. Just push them. C5, C6, A6. Like this is how people lose. They they start okay. kind of uh, you know. Or yeah, not we got to show people this point. So Levy's point is just play c5 here. You don't need the king. It's too slow. Play c5. When black takes on f3, you play c6. Pawn takes c6 and then a6. So that's a great little breakthrough. Simple end game tactics to make a pass pawn there. And again, it might not have been. Per I mean, white might still be doing very well because you're going to walk the king to b7, blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. well, also, f4 is now hanging in a lot of situations. Yeah, with the king on b7, white looks pretty good. Let's see how Artak gets out of this one. It's going to be a little magical, huh? So that would actually be Pittsburgh not getting a point. Pittsburgh has been scoring a lot of points, but this would be a point for Barcelona. Yeah. If this does happen. On board one, they are still trying to play. They are still still going at it. It's Rook A1 is odd because now F3, A6, F2, A7. There's moves like Rook A3. I guess why could Queen and win? Hmm. We'll see. I mean, the thing is, like, this looks hopeless to me, but he's won these things before. <laughs> I, I don't know well, how to explain it, but at he least, has. at least not lost them. This one winning for black would be would be really something. Yeah. Uh, a d2, a7, and a7, I mean, rook a3. See? Yeah, but every time something like this, just take it, take just it, take and it. queen. Just take it. All right, take it. Good advice from Levy. Just take it. Queen a, queen h1. The queen is defended by the rook. You can never win it. I mean, the only thing you can hope for here is a miracle draw. But with the queen and the rook defending each other, it's yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, Barcelona's gonna get a point back. Nice. All right. I kind of I'm kind of rooting for a close match. I mean, you may you may have some preference between these two teams, but I've really enjoyed the live club matches that come down to the wire. So oh, yeah, me too. I mean, I don't like to write off a match that quickly. I'm sure it's like being a sports commentator and not liking to do commentary when the team is up by 30 points. Yeah. So it's which is a lot, by the way. All Chat. right, looks like looks like Lola Mento's got this first one. The night ending that we checked in on looks pretty interesting. Tuan Min has still avoided trading queens so far. All right, the position hasn't changed too much from what we what we saw before. Um, you know, the notable thing is that he did choose to avoid that queen trade on e5 mm -hmm. and uh, keep maneuvering with the pieces. Did get it to f5, but that didn't produce anything tangible either. So, okay. So, David, he, he, here's an interesting point. If Black mm -hmm. plays the move Queen F3 here, yeah, White obviously has nothing. With he, he, first, you cannot. I mean, you could take the bishop, but it's just a draw. It's professional. Right. A move like Queen F5, and after Queen F5, G F5, looks like you have maybe made some progress with the pawn structure because you know one pawn suddenly controls three. The pawn and the knight are very strong, but yeah. There's nothing here. There's nothing even there because bishop d7? Bishop d7, knight g3, and even even the move g6. Because this would knight be the take... first chance to get, actually get the king 
into a square that could eventually win with king f4. Right. So he plays queen c2. I mean, he's basically just... Just played queen c2. That's just... Wow, bishop a4. That's uh, that's cute. It's a cute yeah. move. Take my bishop. Yeah, good defense from Kamayanga here. He's going to have to do a bit better than he did in the knockout. If it's a close match, then the Raptors are going to need some points on the top board. Can't let uh, Tuan Min just run all over the day. Yeah. It's not looking so good on some other boards where Artak Manukyan is now basically checkmated. It is mate on the board coming up. Mm -hmm. So his There's opponent... Point for Lolamento. But uh, Pittsburgh's still holding a healthy lead despite that. They had a quick two points from Locky Tuba. Um, what else is still going on? Let's see Art Vega in this tricky night endgame. It looks like it's gotten complicated. Kagaka has done some good stuff here. Yep. So... Does he want to go h5 now? Usually you want to keep the pawns together. On g3, I'd be worried about king f3, but I suppose knight d4, knight b3, you can just switch sides. Yeah, I, I wrote this game off as a bit boring, and you know, losing it would be impressive. But that's that's why the players exist to yeah. make things exciting. I found knight endings can do all kinds of cool stuff. Chat also should mention that, uh, and I actually just saw the, the, the command come in for this, but after yeah. our shows on Saturdays, we have sub Saturday as well, where subscribers of the Twitch chess channel can go up against the host, talk about their games, get some insights. And today it's actually Sopiko Guramishvili, who has been doing the entire women's speech of championship alongside Anna Rudolph. Oh my goodness. Continue. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I thought you were excited for that, but I guess you're excited for the game. <laughs> well, there was a sudden decisive result in the game between Tuan Min and Kamayonga. What? Really? Yeah, seriously. Like, one move away, we just, like, clicked away, like, yeah, basically a draw. Queen d2 was played, avoiding, you know, queen takes bishop. And on f5, queen b2. And just wow, un right there. unbelievable. Just made it out That's of the great. blue. He was That's just crazy. trying to clarify the situation, right? clarify it and it's it's now clear that's it's unbelievable clear. wow what a what a blunder yeah that's that's really, that's really a shame all right well with that we will take a quick break to catch our breath because we're building what basically is at this point an insurmountable lead unless the comeback of the century is staged on the part of barcelona well yeah. we will see this this uh this this live match to its conclusion when we come back
Welcome back. Barcelona Raptors versus Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers. The Raptors needing this win to get the, the second spot in the, uh, in the playoffs for Division B. And uh, it doesn't look like it's happening, Levy. No, it doesn't. Uh, very rough day for, for their team. I mean, who could have predicted that Tuan Minlay for Pittsburgh would just go on this rampage, winning the knockouts, now winning the first game? Uh, in, in, in the head-to-head -head of the live club match. Pittsburgh, everything going right for them today and literally everything going wrong for Barcelona. Yeah, they're having opposite days. And in fact, if Pittsburgh wins this club match, they pass Barcelona into third place. Barcelona entered the day in second place in the division, but they're looking at a zero-point day to a six-point day from Pittsburgh and the whole you know mini division series flips on its head. Um. Yeah, ru really, really heartbreaking for them. But uh, let's look at a little bit of the chess here. We've got Tuan Min playing one more game here as Black, and he's played a very aggressive pawn sack here out of the opening. Um, really just gunning for it. Right, right, right. Man, this is... he, he He's built some momentum, and <laughs> from there, he's trying to... Push, push, push his, his, his capabilities. I mean, this reminds me of his game against, uh, uh, was it uh, the first game, I think. No, yes, the first game of the knockouts where he was black in this kind of slav. Uh, and his opponent mm -hmm. was kind of better in an abstract way, but very quickly the position just turned around. He had a very similar yeah. situation. He had the rooks. The queen and the couple minor pieces pressuring in the center. And yeah, he got, a very he got active. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of rook d1 here? I mean, it seems like bishop e4 might be a mistake. I mean, maybe you can look at it more deeply than, than I am if we move the pieces. But rook d1, rook d1, queen to e7. Attacking the bishop on e4 with the idea of queen e3 check. I think, you, well, at that point, you got to take on c6, right? So yeah. Yeah. if queen e3... Oh my gosh, can you play king g3? Three maybe to try and keep things going. Um, there'd be a weird draw with pawn takes bishop, king takes bishop, rook e4. King takes bishop, rook e4. Yeah, and then queen f4. Oh no, the king can then come back to f1. That's not yeah, a draw. Yeah, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm going to come backwards. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> that's a very odd kind of draw. It's a lot. The other point is that if you play a move like bishop f5, right, you're hitting my queen. And let's say I'm play like uh, queen b3, mm -hmm. b takes c6. There is rook e1, I think, coming. <clears throat> that would be most unwelcome. Most unwelcome. What are ridiculous tacticals? I mean, king g3 is, huh. a, is, a, is a bogus move. That is that is absolutely ridiculous that a move like that can even be played. Yeah, he spent a minute on the move uh, bishop e4, so maybe he saw all this. Maybe, and but on king bishop takes f3. This bishop gets away. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so my idea doesn't even work for black, does it? Yeah, king g3 is a crazy move. If Tuan Minlay goes for this and misses it, that could be it. I mean, he he might just lose immediately, but. Uh, in the meantime, Pittsburgh has been stomping 25-14 as it is right now. Maintaining that, maintaining that 10-point lead, which is not close. Yes, that is, <laughs> that is an understatement. They have won on so many of the boards, and I believe at some moment they are going to actually mathematically eliminate yeah. Barcelona completely. Just a, just a stunning day. Uh, I need to apologize, and I think we both need to apologize in our prediction. We did not anticipate six out of six. No, we really didn't. We should also apologize to one of the one of the <laughs> chief uh, chief architects of of this of the summer league series, and, and and who's been a tremendous help to us. <laughs> That's Isaac Steinkamp, who's also hosted the show several times. He actually was, I believe, managing Pittsburgh over the regular season. Yeah. And yeah, I even apologized to him. I was like, sorry, man, I, I can't go with Pittsburgh. No. I really can't. And well, no. Isaac, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Isaac. Oh, this is a lot of apologies for us. Maybe we shouldn't do that thing where we predict the results. Yeah, I don't like that. You if know all what? it leads to is us like begging forgiveness. 
<laughs> well, you know what's in it for us? Hey, man, the talking heads of like NBA predict, you know, different things on a six hour basis from each other. Right. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, this guy's going to do this and this guy's going to do that. And well, they're this never game, right. This game, Artox got the extra pawn. So he may be able to extract some vengeance on Lola Mento. Um, who did a pretty good job of dispatching him in the first game. Rook D3, solid, good move. Yeah, this is going to be a tough end game for Black, I would say. Down a pawn, double B pawns. I think this end game plays well into a night end game for White as far as like an end game where you've got the best chances to win this. Probably be a right. night end game. Yeah. Night, um, night end games are... All right, what did Tuan Min do? He did something interesting here. He traded rooks on d1. Then he trades his bishop on f3. Right, because if the bishop takes, he gets e3 right away. So g takes f3, creating some little weak, some further weaknesses on h4 and so forth. But quickly, f5, he wants to play f4. King f8, queen d3, f4. Well, now, now wow, white just, just allows f4. Yeah, but also now he's just in a, in a permanently worse endgame. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you still got to be... Okay, rook d4 is, is logical. He wants to go rook e4, and now he also has h4. Yeah. Uh, but with good play, I think black can, can maybe defend. This looks like desperation from Tuan Min playing all these moves so fast here. Hey, shout out to Goldust Story. Hope you had a, a good day of chess. You were playing a lot. Yeah. We were looking I... at some of your games. <sighs> this is lost, no? It looks lost. I mean, white's got these connected passers. If they get time for rook h7, black's got minimal counterplay. If black played king g8, then, you know, white might win by moving the king to f6. I, it looks really tough for black to me. Yeah, this looks really difficult. I think Tuan Min Lei also kind of maybe got a bit careless there, played a little bit too quickly. Um, yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh has essentially clinched the victory. Yeah. So I think they already did for maybe about 10, 15 minutes. So uh, perfectionism is is not always necessary, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a very, very clean conversion by Kamayanga so far. I mean, can't can't complain about that. Oh, king is cut off. I expect resignation in a few moves because the pawns are just going to march king g4 to g6 f5. Nine point lead, somewhere around eight games remaining. Nice win. Very nice. See if our talk can convert this on board too. So how was that? I mean, that we we. We, it passed through really fast, but that was brilliant of Kamayunga to sack that pawn on e3 with check to get the queen trade. Mm -hmm. Because then, I mean, who cares about the pawn on e3? It's basically dead. And there's the resignation. Wow. That was pretty sweet. I mean, I was surprised. Like, queen d3, just ignoring f4 completely. f4, trade on c6. Give up this pawn, but there's no way to recapture without allowing this trade. And then rook d4 was a nice move probably, too. Yeah, so we have a few games remaining here uh, from, from yeah. the third match. Uh, I guess we, we will see them out to their conclusion, see what the final scoreline is going to be. Yeah. See if Manukian can control this rook on c3 or c2. It's already been there twice. Is that the end? Rook c8, king e2, rook check, rook c3. Wow. He's met somebody else who's good at uh, rook endgames. Oh, wow, yeah. Good at endgames too. Lola Mento. I mean... Saves the pawn down endgame, wins the pawn up endgame. This is our talk's bread and butter. Yeah, now we have just a couple. We have, a, we have the boards three and the board four fighting. All right. I, li Rope I like how some, some of the fans played longer than the, than the, the title player. That's very rare. That just shows that Tuan Min played a little too fast that last game, probably. Yeah, I think he just wanted to go chill. <laughs> it was... <laughs> He'd, he'd, he'd had a good day. He just wanted to go help people design that trophy statue of him that, that you'd commissioned. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Wow, like Thurtha. Like, like, 
Lathgirtha is having fun here. Four connected past pawns. I don't know if I've ever seen a more dominant side of the board than that. Four against zero pawns. Angelic Dragon can't accept it. Cannot accept it. Let's see what else we got. Rojito. Wow, they're just they're just kicking this game off. <laughs> are they really? Pretty much. Oh, oh yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. All at the pieces they're... are on the board at least. But listen, if it's UA Arthur, then he's just gotta offer a draw. Just gonna offer a draw. All he's gotta do. All he's gotta do. I mean, his team, Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers, are winning this one. I'm looking at some games at the bottom here. Didn't Arthur Matchup... play for another team earlier today? Did he? I'm not sure. I think so. Maybe he came over for another team to spoil uh to spoil Pittsburgh to spoil uh the Raptors day. All right, and Pittsburgh needs exactly one more point to clinch this. Twenty nine to twenty nine would be a tie in this match. <clears throat> yeah, <it's> <laughs> so ten ten point runs. What? There's a there's a chance, David. There's a chance. You never know. See what else is going on. The Great Gatsby. Let's see. Let's see how Gatsby is doing. Great Gatsby in a four rook end game up a pawn. Needs to win it for Barcelona. Um, maybe f5 is a fine move here. f5, rook g6, and I guess if you trade everything, it's over. <clears throat> that would be bad. That would be bad. I don't know if that's the best, but that's one possibility. F5, what else? Rook to the first rank. White could take on G7 and on Rook check, go to G3 and get out. Hmm. Yeah, the pressure on G4 is just too much in this one. This Rojito and UAR3 game looks like it's getting out of hand very, very quickly. But I can't tell for who. Right. At first, uh, at first, yeah, at first glance, I was thinking, like, White is winning some some material. He's up a right. bond, but it looks like he's also just collapsing on the dark spots. Right. Black sacked that E5 pawn to sort of blow things open. Rook to E8. It's looking... I got to go with Black. I mean, with that Bishop on F1 and Rook on H1. Although black has C8 and B8, kind of almost similar. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it seems like white won't be castling. Maybe queen side. Maybe queen side. Or just not at all. But uh, yeah. We saw Georg Meyer castle queen side successfully in some weird spot, kind of like this. But with the knight on E5 hanging and the pawn on E4 hanging, I think it's too late for castling. Got to be too late. I mean, you're you're totally totally falling apart at this point. Uh, what are you gonna play? You're gonna play a move like knight d3 here. Come on. Now, yeah, knight f3. Just uh, first yeah. of all, f takes e4 should probably just be winning because there's now also can... knight d3. Oh, nice idea. Just plop the knight on d3. Hello, you're gonna take me or not? I don't even care. All right, but he plays rook e4. Can't be as good as your move. Your move allowed bishop f5 too. Yeah. Still, it's what you would call good enough, yeah? Uh, yes, it's good oh. enough, and yeah, uh, Pittsburgh has clinched. Yeah, that's good enough, too. They got their point somewhere else um, before UAR Tour could get it. So, the Puffins made it into the playoffs. Second second place behind uh, Baden Baden. Yeah, so Puffins had a Pretty decent day today at the office. They do a very nice job. But obviously, the story of Group B, I mean, I, I suppose it's a, it's a story and maybe an epilogue, is, uh, is, is, is Pittsburgh. They came to fight on the last day. Their fans showed up. Their representative did an outstanding job scoring as many points as he possibly could for them. Well, I suppose with the exception of the, of the last one. But, uh, yeah, just, just a great, great result for them to make it into third place. Obviously, like you said, they still have a little bit of a hurdle to cross uh, before they 
you know, make uh, make it to what what might be the the championship for themselves. But before today, no one was talking about them. Yeah, except about how bad they were doing. Yeah, people were asking where are their fans. Like this is, this team is like known for having so many fans, and then they were outnumbered in the club matches each week. And uh, this week, finally, not so. Yeah, I mean, the, they had some, they had some real ground to make up. I mean, six points, and then you know, with a couple of results going in the right direction, uh, and and it all worked out. So now that uh, things have been clinched, uh, we will have uh, an update on the standings shortly. But let's just take a quick look at the upcoming schedule. Uh, we have Group C coming up, and this is a weekly thing, y'all. So we got Group C next week. Teams like Armenia, Eagles, Sao Paulo is playing. Any and all information is available on the Pro Chess League site for Summer Series. Mm -hmm. But slightly earlier start time, one hour earlier, but this thing just keeps on rolling. 13th, yeah. 20th, and 27th. Uh, and then August, Group D. Yeah, every, every three weeks you get a new team to, uh, to root for. And... Uh... You know, or two, because uh, lots of people are playing two fan matches per day. Actually, I see a lot of people playing both matches, finding two teams they like or just they like chess. And uh, yeah, next week we'll be on a little bit a little bit earlier. And uh, Pittsburgh, after today's great showing, goes into that fan poll with San Francisco, and then whichever teams finish third in groups C and D. Yes. Yeah, speaking of, I'm not sure if we have uh, an updated. I believe that we do, but uh, Baden Baden and Reykjavik up top with 10 points in the standings. Yeah, we do. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I love it. So Baden Baden and Reykjavik up top. Pittsburgh sneaks into that ninth place spot, like you said, to get a vote potentially with San Fran. Barcelona eliminated. And eliminated. Yeah, not only that, I mean, I think they were a relegated team during the regular season. So a tough one for Barcelona. Beautiful town, by the way. Absolutely beautiful city. But uh, the yeah. chest today was was not beautiful for them. It could have been better. No, they looked they looked unstoppable the first week. They looked like a powerhouse team. They took the lead in the first week, had a so-so second week, and then crashed and burned in the third week. Yeah, very, very difficult. But uh, Baden, Baden, and Reykjavik also can still swap places, right? Fan growth is a thing that goes on the entirety of the season until uh, August. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that'll decide which of them gets the higher seed in the Summer Series Championship, which they will both play in. Higher seed will presumably get a weaker opponent in their first match. So that would be, uh, so that would be their reason to continue building their, their fan clubs, um, in addition to the fact that fans are cool. Who doesn't yep. want fans? Oh, fans are great. So we see the final, you know, the, the basically the tentative final bracket. Of course, some places can still swap, but uh, these are your teams so far that have secured a qualification spot in the championship bracket. And of course, there will be other teams like the third place finishers that are eligible with a Twitter vote. But uh, our games are slowly coming to a conclusion. Um, yeah, so we're going to um, we're going to sign off here, everybody. We're going to take a short, uh, short break and be back with sub Saturday in just a couple minutes. So um, Sopico will be here, uh, I think, in seven minutes or so. So, um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for being with us. Hope you enjoyed today's games. And uh, have a great rest of your Saturday. Been very fun commentating with you, David. Everybody, Likewise. signing off. Group, group B is done. Half the summer league is now over. And next week, we get uh, international, free, you know, high, high mileage, uh, we get the uh, mileage I, I, division. The, the mileage, mileage division. Take care, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week here for Summer League Series with Group C. The most elite event in online chess returns with more than $100,000 in prizes. The Speed Chess Championship is bigger and better than ever. As players try to qualify their way in through the women's and juniors field, we take a look ahead and see who's on deck waiting amongst the seated players. Of course, right there at the top, you have defending champion Hikaru Nakamura. He'll face a familiar cast of foes in guys like Jan Napomniashi, Alexander Grishuk, Jan Christoph Duda, and more. But perhaps his biggest challenger will be a brand new player in the field. Currently the world number three and the top chess player from China, 
Dingley Wren at 2809 looks to make his SCC debut a memorable one. Look ahead and mark your calendars for November 29th through December 1st, where the semifinals and finals will happen. You can follow all the action at twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV, or go to speedchesschampionship.com to stay up to date with all the latest news and info. Be sure to fill out your fantasy bracket and try to predict who's going to win this year's Speed Chess Championship, and we'll see you on chess.com.